You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to call cause number 2018 CRA 1475 D4 to order the state of Texas versus Juan David Ortiz. Can I have the parties uh, announce their presence, please, whoever's at uh, the lead tables? Good morning, Your Honor. Isidro Alanis, District Attorney for Webb County for the state of Texas. I'm with uh, Josh Davila, uh, the other attorneys uh, that will also be participating in the case is Marisela Jackman, uh, we have uh, uh, Daniela Lizondo, Karina Rios, um, we also have uh, Rogelio Soto, and David Ruth Inch for the state. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Joel Perez and Mr. Raymond Fuchs for Mr. Juan David Ortiz, and we are ready for trial, Your Honor. Thank you. Maybe seated. We have uh, at least one motion that was filed this morning by the state, Mr. Alanis, uh, uh, state's first motion in limine. Did you all confer on this motion? Ms. Jackman, are you going to be urging this? I believe it was signed by you, right? Did you all have an opportunity to confer on this? Yes, Your Honor, we did, and there is no opposition. It is in agreement with it. Um, there, some of the things are practical, Your Honor. Just uh, like uh, one is uh, any mention of pretrial motions filed by the state, but I would imagine that if I have witnesses on the stand, I might say, you've testified before because we have a record. I mean, that's, 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 I anticipate that that's fine. Um, yeah, there's a few matters that were probably are also that I know this thing. Yeah, but other than that, I mean, I don't think I'll, I'll cross the line on anything. Okay, so then uh, the state's motion, uh, first motion in limine is granted. Thank you. As to all matters. Was there uh, any other motion by either the state or the defense that needs to be urged at this time? No, Your Honor. Not from the defense, Your Honor. Okay. I do have a, a matter that I needed to address with the attorneys uh, regarding the um, availability of, of one of our uh, jurors. And um, you have the list, sir. Thank you. Well, let me ask Mr. Alanis and Mr. Perez, can you both approach on this briefly?
Mr. Alanis, Mr. Perez, is there any other pretrial matter that we need to address before we're ready for the jury? Mm -hmm. Not from the defense, Your Honor. Not from the state, Your Honor. Okay. We're going to see how many jurors have arrived. We did uh, ask them to be here a little later in the morning, anticipating um, some pretrial motions that were going to be filed or that were discussed at the last hearing. Um, as the attorneys know, that we, we instructed the jurors to be here uh, before 10 a.m. So uh, I know we had at least six of them a few minutes ago. <clears throat> so as soon as we have, um, I guess it's going to be uh, 15 jurors. No, as soon as we have all 15, we'll, uh, we'll get started. So we'll take a, a short recess at this time. And uh, actually, let me call. We have some representatives from the media. I'll take, I'll take advantage of, the, of this opportunity here. If we can call up, um, is it Mr. Um, uh, Miss or I don't know, Eddie? Os is it Osifo? Looking at the spelling here. She's right there. She's looking down. Oh, it's yes. Osifo. Yes. Yua. Yua Osifo. Um, Grace Wong, El Elizabeth Savala, Erica Hernandez. Uh, these are representatives from uh, NBC, uh, Dateland, Court TV, SA Express, KSAT. Um, Adrian has to show up here. And KGNS. Okay, well, any other representatives? I, I don't want to leave anyone out. I just want to give some general instructions. I know that our 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 office uh, PIO has informed you all uh, of of some of the, some of the general instructions, which I I know most of you are familiar with. Other through your experience. <clears throat> the main one that I have is obviously no, there should be no filming of the jurors. Um, and if there's a bench conference, I know I have a mic here that I turn off or I silence it, but there's other mics that I don't have any control over. Uh, I'll ask you all to silence those. Also, if there's a bench conference a sidebar uh, between the lawyers and the court, as we just had a few minutes ago. Um, uh, and also just to, um, I guess to keep a proper court decorum just just to not be distracting and that's why we gave you all an opportunity to come in early and set up uh, we don't want the jurors to be distracted by a lot of movement in and out from the media uh, we'll be taking breaks for the jurors purposes and for everyone's purposes so if, if any of you need to step out during that time and uh, you can do it then uh, certainly if you need to leave in the in, in, while we're still conducting uh, the, the court um, process and just just do it silently please or without distracting uh, anyone uh, those are my general instructions at this time so are any questions from anyone uh, I understand uh, there, there's a few other uh, media representatives have contacted us this morning asking to if they can bring in and set up a camera and uh, I, I think we have enough cameras and I know there was at least one of our uh, media representatives who offer to share some of the footage right to other media so we don't have to have another three or four cameras in here because I don't think we have much more room for that and uh, so those are my instructions any questions from anyone from the media thank you all for your assistance on this but again you have them ready bring them in we have witnesses bring them in another copy of this witness list.
Can, are those, can you can move those chairs that are there. Okay, great. Okay, one second. That, that one's fine there, Mr. Bruce. Yeah. How many how many seats are there? Fifteen exactly. But we only need fifteen. How many do you have? I count sixteen. It's only 15? You're not counting that one then. You are? I have 16. Why am I counting 16? Yes, we only need 15. That's what I'm saying. Unless, I can, unless you can sit, uh, are you going to be standing or sitting there? Okay, just that can be yours. How many, what's the head count so far on jurors, Mr. Mr. Medina? Three only? Okay. All right, can we call the jurors forward, please? Uh, any, I'm sorry, the witnesses, any witness who's going to be testifying in this case, can you please come forward while we wait for the jury? Let's wait for everyone to come up, and then I'll ask you all to identify yourselves, please. All right. So for now, we have six witnesses uh, who are here present. Can you state your name for the record, please? Yes, uh, Jesus Fernandez, Javier Torreo, Brian Stern, Federico Calderón, Roberto Castillo, Eric Zeno, Jr. Can you keep your race right hand? Do each of you solemnly for the testimony you're going to give during this trial will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. Okay, thank you. So the uh, lawyers will, will tell you when the, and they anticipate calling you to testify as a witness. Um, you are under oath at this, at this point, are uh, not allowed to discuss the facts of the case with any other witness uh, or in the presence of any other witness. If the lawyers need to speak with you, uh, they can speak with you, obviously, but so long as there's no other witness in the room. And you're also... Um, Excluded from the courtroom. I believe there was a, a request to exclude the witnesses, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, invoke that at this time. So you'll be asked to remain outside of the courtroom until you're called in to testify as a witness. Okay? Any questions? No. So just be on standby so that uh, when they call you, you're ready to go. Thank you all. Your excuse for now. Anything else, Mr. Dennis? There's nothing else that was filed that you have. Cool. I want to make sure that the, the, we're all aware that the, the, the rule has been invoked. Yes, sir. Okay. I did state that. All right, so we're waiting on, on the jurors to arrive, so we'll, we'll, we'll take a short recess at this time, and uh, as soon as all jurors are present, we will commence with uh, opening statements. Okay?
recorded back in session. State ready, defense ready. Well, one matter. Well, you may be seated for now. State on which count of the indictment they intend to proceed. So that is elect. There's a, a four count indictment, and be improper joinder, as so we would request an election. Can see a couple of minutes. Where's the binder that has all the names? Is it over here? Yes. I think it's here, Mr. Mr. Fitness, I have a copy here. Yes, sir, you may, please. Mr. Fuchs?
that came up. Um, that we're ready for the jury now. Mr. Medina? Yes. Have him bring the jury, please. All rise for the jury. All right, to the jury. You may be seated. I'm sorry? I don't have to tell him anything at this point. But yes. Good Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you are still in, uh, under the same instructions that I've previously given to you. Um, we're going to also provide you with some notepads and pens. Uh, Mr. Medina, again, who is the uh, bailiff who will have you in charge. Uh, he's going to hand those out. You're not required to take any notes, uh, but if you wish to take notes, you may. Uh, all your notes will, will remain in the jury room when you um, leave for the day. And at the conclusion of trial, uh, Mr. Medina or one of our bailiffs will ensure that uh, your notes get shredded. Okay. And just remember that if you do use uh, uh, notepads and do take notes, that they are for your own personal use. They are not to be considered as official transcripts. You'll get some additional written instructions on how you can utilize those notes if you do take notes at the conclusion of the presentation of evidence. So the state and defense have announced ready. Uh, Mr. Alanis, uh, you ready to? Yes, Your Honor. This? this is the state of Texas versus Juan David Ortiz. Yes. It's on green? No, no, no. The light. Yes, on green. Okay, so. Test, test, test. Can you hear me? In the name and by the authority of the state of Texas, the grand jurors, duly elected, duly selected, organized, sworn and impaneled as such for the county of Webb, State of Texas, at the July-December term, 2018, of the 341st District Court, sitting in for the 406th District Court, of said county, upon their oath, present in and to the said court, that on or about the third day of September, 2018, and interior to the presentment of this indictment, in the county and state aforesaid, 
Juan David Ortiz did then and there, intentionally or knowingly, cause the death of an individual, namely Melissa Ramirez, by shooting Melissa Ramirez in the head with a firearm. And on or about the 13th day of September, 2018, Juan David Ortiz did then and there, intentionally or knowingly, cause the death of another individual, namely Claudine Luera, by shooting Claudine Luera in the head with a firearm. And on or about the 15th day of September, 2018, Juan David Ortiz did then and there intentionally or knowingly cause the death of another individual, namely Griselda Alicia Cantu, a.k.a. Griselda Hernandez, a.k.a. Griselda Alicia Hernandez, by striking Griselda Alicia Cantu, a.k.a. Griselda Hernandez, a.k.a. Griselda Alicia Hernandez, in the head with an unknown object and shooting Griselda Alicia Cantu Hernandez in the neck with a firearm. And are about the 15th day of September, Juan David Ortiz did then and there intentionally or knowingly cause the death of another individual, namely Humberto Ortiz, a.k.a. Janelle Ortiz, by shooting Janelle Ortiz in the head with a firearm. And all of the murders were committed during different criminal transactions, but the murders were committed pursuant to the same scheme or course of conduct. Count two. And the grand jurors aforesaid upon their oaths do further present in and to said court that on or about the 14th day of September 2018 and interior to the presentment of this indictment in the county and state aforesaid, Juan David Ortiz did then and there intentionally or knowingly threaten Erica Peña with imminent bodily injury and the defendant did then and there use or exhibit a deadly weapon to wit a firearm during the commission of said assault. And the grand jurors aforesaid on count three upon their oath do further present in and to the said court that on or about the 14th day of September 2018 and to the presentment of this indictment in the county and state aforesaid Juan David Ortiz did then and there intentionally or knowingly by force intimidation deception restrain Erica Peña hereafter styled the complaint without her consent by restricting the movements of the complainant namely by grabbing her upper body and blouse and Juan David Ortiz did in there recklessly expose the complainant to a substantial risk of serious bodily injury by pointing a firearm at the complainant. Count four. And the grand jurors aforesaid upon their oath do further present and into the said court that on or about the 15th day of September 2018 anterior to the presentment of this indictment in the county and state of aforesaid. Juan David Ortiz did in there intentionally flee from trooper John Henry Bradshaw, a person the defendant knew was a peace officer who was attempting lawfully to detain the defendant against the peace and dignity of the state. And to be charged, not guilty of harm. You may be seated. You may be seated with your opening remarks. May it please the court, counsel, ladies and gentlemen. The evidence will show that on September the 14th of 2018, the women who work as prostitutes on San Bernardo Avenue in Laredo Webb County, Texas, were scared. They were scared because two of their friends had been found dead, Melissa Ramirez and Claudine Luera. One of those women that was scared was Erica Peña. On September the 14th, Erica had been laying low for about 10 days. The evidence will show that she needed money, so she decided to go out to the boulevard on San Bernardo to go look for work. It was nighttime and she went to a bench, a bus stop. As she sat there, she could feel the sprinkles of rain coming down and hitting her face. <coughs> it was around that time that she sees it, the white, shiny, four by four Dodge truck. She knew that truck. She will come here and she will tell you that was David. She knew he was a military guy 
He was nice, handsome, kind, and tall. And he would give her money. The evidence will show that he pulls up to the bus stop. The window rolls down. Hey, babe, get in. She'd been with him at least four or five times before. So she decides, okay. The evidence will show that David knew the routine. First, go buy her her fix. Go get the heroin. After they did that, go buy his tallies. Three Bud Light tall boys is what he usually liked. After they buy the drugs, after they buy the beer, they're driving. One of Erica's rules, she'll tell you, is that she doesn't like to go far from the downtown area for safety. As she notices David driving further away, she asks, I don't want to go far. He invites her to his house on the north side, and she agrees. After all, she had been there before. They get to the house. The evidence will show on the north side on a street named Burr Oak. It's a nice house where he lives with his wife and his kids, but the evidence will show that they were out of town. They were here in San Antonio to come and watch the Canelo fight. They go in there and she'll tell you how she puts her drugs out on the table and starts prepping the dose. Everything's fine up until the moment that Melissa Ramirez's name comes up. She was sad because her friend Melissa had been found dead and her other acquaintance friend, Claudine. When their name com comes up, she notices that David becomes uneasy. Some look comes over his face. Starts getting jittery. She senses, well, let's go outside, have a smoke. Calm things down. This is the talk of the town right now, these murders that have occurred. They go out, they have a smoke. She asks, can I borrow your phone so I can call my mom? I want to let her know I'm okay. The evidence will show that he ignores her request. David appears nervous and he says something to her that just doesn't fit. He says, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that Melissa may have my DNA. I was one of the last ones to be with her before she disappeared. Second to the last, he says. And she's like, don't worry about it. If you were with her, you were with her. They go back inside. She sits at the kitchen table, smoking a cigarette. It's at this time that she notices the look in David's face. He's anxious. Now, call it a sixth sense, call it a gut feeling. Suddenly, she realizes she's in danger. The evidence will show that she becomes nauseous. This overwhelming feeling of nauseousness and dizziness comes over her as the fear runs through her body. She runs out the front door and she vomits. She vomits on the front grass. He comes out, he says, what's wrong, what's wrong? She goes, I don't feel good. Take me back, take me back, I don't feel good. He offers her, he offers her to take a shower. He still wants to be with her. She's like, I can't, I'm sick, take me back. 
He goes, you need something in your stomach, I'll take you to go get something to eat. She sees the opportunity and she says, take me. The evidence will show that they drive not too far to a Valero gas station off of the Loop 20 and McPherson Boulevard. A real busy, one of the new type gas stations that has a little restaurant area. But something's not right. And the evidence will show that as they pull into the gas station, they don't stop in front. David parks in the back behind a tractor trailer practically on the street in the dark. He tells her, hey, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. Right now, the evidence will show that she is in complete survival mode. She is in fear. Calmly, she thinks, I need to open the door. I need to get out. Without warning, all of a sudden, as she sits in the passenger side, David reaches with his arm, his left arm, and there's a gun in her face. He grabs her blouse. Instinctively, she pulls back, is able to grab the door handle. And the evidence will show that she's able to duck down, pull herself out of her blouse, and leaves him holding her blouse in his hand as she jumps off the white Dodge 4x4. She runs in her bra and pants around the front of the store. We will take you to that store. You will see that video of her coming around the store looking for help. Call it a gift. Putting gas at one of the pumps is a Texas DPS state trooper, Francisco Hernandez. When this woman, all of a sudden, approaches him in her bra and pants asking for help. She keeps saying, I'm scared. Help me. I'm scared. He's going to get me. You will see at that time, Francisco Hernandez with his training and experience turns on his body cam. He records the entire thing, the encounter that he has with her. You will hear, you will hear him calling, calling it in. First, he will ask for PD, Laredo PD, to show up. Then he realizes that this case may be, based on what she's saying, it may be related to the string of murders that's going on. He calls over to the station. They direct him to a Texas Ranger who's working the case, EJ Salinas. They patch him through. They give him instructions to bring her to the station. This is just the beginning of how we got here today. Throughout this trial, we are going to bring you evidence. We are going to, yes, we're in Bear County, but through the evidence, through technology, through photos, through videos, and through testimony, we will take you to those dark, to that dark and horrible places that this happened. Through the evidence, we will take you to those last moments, to those last moments of these women's lives. You will have one of the most important pieces of evidence in this case, the video recorded confession of Juan David Ortiz. You will have the ability to see, to hear, and to analyze for yourselves his confession. 
about the murders. But that's not all. That's not all that the state will be bringing you. We will be bringing you crime scene evidence, which includes casings from the crime scene, projectiles taken from the victims, the jackets of the projectiles. We will be bringing you the murder weapon that was used in this case. The analysis and the experts and the ballistic reports and analysis that were done, you will hear from the experts that made the comparisons in this case. We will also bring you video evidence from the different locations that Juan David Ortiz visited around the time before and after the murders were taking place. Going in and buying beer, going in to use a restroom, and you will see in these videos his demeanor and his behavior as normal as anyone else's walking the streets. Walking in, buying this merchandise, walking in, going to the restroom. Nothing out of the ordinary. We will be bringing you autopsy evidence of all the victims. Where the doctor will come and tell you and show you the injuries and the causes of death of each victim. We will bring you circumstantial evidence. All of this evidence that, that we will be bringing you you will be able to see that we will be able to prove the crime or crimes, the scheme, and his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt as charged. This case, the evidence will show, is about a man who betrayed his badge, he betrayed his country, he betrayed his family, he betrayed his community for his own selfish needs. On September the 3rd of 2018, on or about <coughs> He murdered by shooting in the back of the head Melissa Ramirez. We will take you through the evidence to Jeffrey's Road on the outskirts of Webb County where her body was left, right where he shot her. On her bow. September the 13th of 2018, he killed Claudine Luera. And just like Melissa, 10, 11 days later, 10 days later, he takes her near the area where Melissa was killed, the outskirts of Webb County or of the city of Laredo and shoots her in the back of the head. We will take you to the overpass at the 22 mile marker in Webb County where on September the 14th he murdered Guiselda Hernandez Cantu. And finally, we will take you on IH 35, the 13 mile marker, where he murdered 
Janelle Ortiz. All of the crimes you will see and the evidence will show the similar similarities and the scheme. You will see that all of the victims in this case worked in prostitution. The evidence will show that all of the victims had run-ins with the law. They had criminal histories. All of the victims suffered from substance abuse addictions. All of the victims were killed in the similar manner. Execution style, outskirts of the city of Laredo, either on the side of the road or in the shoulder, grassy part next to the road. And the last similarity and connection of all of these crimes was the gun. A 40 caliber HK government issued semi-automatic handgun with government issued ammunition. All the murders, all part of the scheme, all connected. The evidence will show that it was September the 14th of 2018 that Trooper Francisco Hernandez was putting gas there at the Valero when this woman runs up to him and he turns on his, his body cam. He's given instructions to take her to a station. He takes her to the station. When she gets to the station, investigators are already working feverishly and diligently on this case. They're looking for the murderer of Claudine Luera and Melissa Ramirez. They're there, the Texas Ranger, Captain Calderon will bring them to you. They get Erica to the station. This is Erica Pena. When she gets there, she begins the interview with investigators. She reveals her relationship with this guy that she knows as David. She tells him how he's nice. She tells him how he buys her food. She tells him how he buys her drugs and that she's known him for about five months. What she doesn't know at this time, the evidence will show that He's a border patrol agent, a supervisory border patrol agent. The evidence will show that sometimes when he would pick her up, his shirt would be turned, the polo shirt with the logo would be turned inside out. And when he would pick her up, the evidence will show that he always picked her up in the white Dodge 4x4 pickup truck. She will also reveal some intimate details about their relationship. Personal things that only she knew about David, which, it, which includes and included the sexual encounters that they would have. The most important thing that she provides investigators is I know where he lives. I know where he lives. It's near the academy. I don't know the address, but if you take me over there, I'll be able to spot the house. She is able to take them right to his doorstep. That's where I was. 
and investigators that night were able to see the vomit that was still fresh on the front lawn. The investigators run the, the information through the property rolls. DPS, also through their intelligence, they were able to find out that the house belonged to this man who sits here today. Juan David Ortiz and his wife. That's where he lived. The sheriffs, the evidence will show that the, the, the sheriffs put out a bolo, be on the lookout. Texas DPS troopers, deputies from the Webb County Sheriff's Department begin a search all over Laredo. Focusing mostly on the boulevard where this type of activity, activity takes place. And we will take you to that boulevard through the evidence. The evidence will show that approximately one in the morning, Trooper John Henry Bradshaw, as he's driving, he looks over to the stripes on the corner of Jefferson and San Bernardo. Parked over by the dumpster on the far left side, he sees it. The white Dodge four-door four by four shiny truck trooper calls it in another trooper Javier Obregón pulls in they take a tactical position by the by the pumps by now this man is considered armed and dangerous you will see the body cam video we will show you the video you will be there we will show you the video from the store that was taken by investigators that shows Juan David Ortiz going in to use the restroom. And as he walks out, you will hear and you will see the DPS troopers confronting him from a safe distance, giving him orders. Put your hands up. Stop. Get on your knees. Get on your knees. For more than 45 seconds, you will see Juan David Ortiz moving, swaying, thinking. What does he do? He doesn't comply. He doesn't kneel. He says, you're scaring me. You're scaring me. And then he runs. You will see the video of the chase on foot where he runs to I-35 access road south. Then he turns on a street called Constantinople. When he turns the corner, the two troopers who are behind him, John Henry Bradshaw tried deploying his taser and missed. Obregón's got his body cam and you can hear him huffing and puffing while he's running. You'll see that video they lose them. They clear the area. They secure everything. Webb County SWAT, Sheriff's Department, gets on scene. DPS gets on scene. They look in all the surrounding areas. The last area that they need to check is the parking lot at the Hotel Ava. They go, they go floor by floor. Clearing the floor. There's not too many vehicles there at this time, but they're checking all the doors, they're checking all the hallways. Finally, they get to one of the top floors and the evidence will show, and you will see as law enforcement being stacked up, make a tactical approach on this black pickup truck and laying down in the back of the truck is Juan David Ortiz. Hiding from law enforcement. A supervisory border patrol agent hiding from law enforcement. They arrest him. You will see the arrest. You will see the takedown. We will take you there. From this point on, the evidence will show, and this is very critical for all of you to please pay attention to, that law enforcement treats 
Juan David Ortiz, with nothing but dignity and respect. Dignity and respect. You will even hear on the evidence, Juan David Ortiz, he tells one of the arresting officers, go ahead, take your trophy shot, take your pick. The response, we're not about that, bro. We're not about that. You will, you will travel with him in the patrol unit when he gets in there. The camera on the patrol car is on. It's, it's a Tahoe. He gets in it, it's on. They are treating him so respectfully that he volunteers. He hears the conversation. You see the gun. Anybody with the gun. He says the gun's in the, in the truck in this area or in the console. You'll, you'll hear him. He volunteers that. Luckily, I will say this, through the evidence, you'll see that when he went to the restroom at the stripes, when John Henry Bradshaw saw him, he left his weapon on the door panel of the truck. He didn't get off with the gun. Just that lapse, that moment that it took, he left the gun in the truck. We will bring you that, that gun. The evidence will show that they transport him to the Webb County substation. When they get to the substation, they place him in a room. And it's around that time already that, as I told you, the evidence will show that the investigators had already been investigating this case. You will hear testimony that by this time, law enforcement had already made at least more than 30 contacts. That includes phone calls. Ma'am, do you know anything? Uh, sir, can we speak to you? People around the street. Law enforcement had already looked at even some other suspects, other leads to other individuals. You'll hear about the intense, intensive investigation, the due diligence that law enforcement was using to find the killer. Nobody was focused on Juan David Ortiz, who during this entire time was working at the border Patrol Intelligence Center as a supervisor watching the investigation of the murder going on in his own community while in his uniform at work. Phone calls being made, requests, can you check text, can you check license plate readers, vehicles traveling through this area, through that area, information that would come out of his station. He was there watching all of this, finding out about other suspects being questioned. He gets there and you're gonna see this. We're gonna take you to the, to the inter, into, into the interview room. You're gonna go to the interview room. You're gonna see the video when it starts. At approximately 3.20 a.m. on September the 15th, Captain Fred Calderon and Texas Ranger E.J. Salinas begin the interview. You will see how they put the Miranda warnings in front of him. You will see how he denies to sign it. But he agrees to speak. You will see initially where he denies knowing anyone, denies knowing anything about what they're talking about. Deny, deny, deny. As they continue to present him with questions, what about Erica? We want to talk to you about Erica. And you'll hear him. And you'll read it. And you'll see it. The only Erica I knew was at Gladys Porter High School when I was a kid growing up in Brownsville. He says it. Very critical. And I ask you to focus during this, this portion of the evidence. Focus on the interview. Focus on his demeanor. Focus on his facial expressions. Focus on his hands. What he says, the words that he chooses, the opportunities that he looks for. This is a man who's a supervisor, 
a veteran. He has a master's. You will see at the initial portion of this interview that he jumps at an opportunity that the Texas Ranger puts right out there in front of him. And he says, do you suffer from blackouts? I do. I suffer from blackouts. You see, since February of 2018, I've been a patient at the VA. I was in Iraq in 2003. I had a motorcycle accident. We're in 2018. He's been a Border Patrol agent for more than nine years by this time, the evidence will show. He jumps on the opportunity when the ranger uses that word, blackouts. <coughs> I've been given all these medications, my anxiety, my depression, my PTSD, that I black out, I wake up, and I'm somewhere that, how did I get here? One time I woke up at Pizza Hut. I don't know how I got there. Um, and you'll see the evidence. I needed to go to the restroom. What were you doing at, at the at, at the stripes on San Bernardo and Jefferson? Well, I needed to go to the restroom, but I don't know how I got there. I had a blackout. He remembers everything except the most critical parts of the crimes. He even, and you will see, when they show him pictures, hey, there's this flowered purse in your back seat. There's this other brown purse in your back seat. Who do those purses belong to on the floorboard? I don't know. I don't know who those purses belong to. Well, they have condoms. They have syringes inside of them. Lipsticks. Who do they belong to? And he says it with a straight face. I don't know. I don't know how that got there. He continues with that. But eventually, through the questions, through the methodical questions that Captain Calderon and Ranger Salinas, remember, they've already interviewed a lot of people. Erica's down the hallway in another room and she's told so many intimate and private information. They also have evidence from two crime scenes that he can't lie anymore. He says, okay, I know Erica. And I pointed a gun at her, but I wasn't gonna do anything to her. The evidence will show that the interview goes into the morning. You will see during the interview that there was no intimidation, there's no coercion. They bring him water, they bring him uh, potato chips. He asks for a bathroom break. They let him go to the bathroom. Everything's calm. Nobody's pounding the tables. It's a discussion. Hey, help us out. Help us out. We know you're a good person. You've served your country and we thank you for your service. You're law abiding. You're a family man. Help us out. Maybe they able to reach that one little inkling of softness if there is any in his heart. And he says, yeah, I know Erica goes into the morning and about 11 24 a.m. you will see it on the video the telltale sign you will see it he says can you take off my handcuffs take them off you'll see Captain Calderon pause this is a moment Critical moment, and he, okay, do I take the handcuffs off this guy? 
Based on his training and experience, he reaches for his key, takes it out of his pocket, takes off his handcuffs. You'll see him rub his wrist, stretch. I did it. Can you tell us? You will see and you will hear through his own words how he took each woman to their last resting place. How he executed them. You will hear in his own words the indifference, the disrespect, the degradation that he has for these people to justify ending their lives. You will hear the evidence in his own words. I wanted to clean up the streets. And in Spanish he says, these people are mierda. These bitches are dirt. And I was going to get rid of them. Law enforcement doesn't do anything about them. I will. I'm sick of them. That's what he says. Trooper, uh, uh, Ranger Salinas and Captain Calderon say, is, look, so you've told us about Melissa. You've told us about Griselda. You told us about Claudine. That's three. Is there anything else? You know, that last question that any good investigator asks, right, in a, in a, in a crime spree, is there anything else, Ortiz? He goes, yeah, there's one more you all don't know about. Janelle Ortiz. You all don't know about her. She's, you'll find her in the grass over by the 13 mile marker where we used to have our border patrol checkpoint. Just right there, as you pull over behind the gravel little mound, She's right there. Law enforcement rushes out to the to the 13 mile marker right behind the gravel mound and Janelle is there shot dead, shot behind the head. You'll see at the end of the video, he says, that's the whole story. But that's not the end of the story. There's moments that are marked in your life. Moments that when they happen, you know things are never going to be the same. Time is divided into two parts. Before this, and after this. And it takes strong people to continue to move forward no matter what they are going to find. The state knows that you are those strong people and you will find Juan David Ortiz guilty. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I won't be as long or nor dramatic, as dramatic as Mr. Alaniz. Um, let me just tell you that everything that Mr. Alaniz just said is not evidence. The only evidence you're going to get is from that stand, okay? It's what he thinks the evidence is going to show, but the evidence that you're going to hear it from over there, I don't know what this thing's on. Um, now, the state also has to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt, okay? And they have the burden of proof of bringing all that evidence to you. We don't have to do anything. The defense doesn't have to do anything. So I ask you to bear that in mind because of that long, lengthy opening statement that he just made. Now, uh, one of the things we would ask you to focus on is the investigation 
that the Webb County Sheriff's Office uh, conducted together with the Texas Rangers. Uh, together with the report writing, the lack of reports, the lack of protocol, and how they, uh, you know, just jump to certain conclusions. Um, it starts with Erica Pena. Uh, beginning September the 3rd of 2018, but it was the first murder, right? And so now law enforcement is working and the like. Now on the 14th, Erica Pena does run to a trooper and says, you know, this individual pulled a gun on me or whatever. Uh, and that trooper reports it. And then these officers that are eager to solve this murders uh, start acting on it. And they believe everything that Erica Pena says. Now, Erica Pena is someone that is a self-confessed heroin and crack addict daily. She uses like 300 or $400 a day to maintain her heroin or crack at addiction uh, and uh, she prostitutes herself she has a child you know some women might prostitute their, themselves for their children <coughs> she prostitutes herself not for her child that's being raised by a, a relative she prostitutes herself to maintain her habit but the police still act on her word like it's gospel uh, she, we've had hearings in this case, and when Mr. Orti, uh, Mr. Alaniz talks that she wanted to get away, she literally said, according to her, that she heard voices. Not like, oh, I got a good feeling, you know what I'm saying? She was hearing voices that day that she says she was with Mr. Ortiz and reports to this trooper that she was assaulted. And uh, these individuals bought it hook, line, and sinker and acting on it. And it's just a focus on the investigation. Now, they put out a bolo, which is a be on the lookout for uh, the vehicle that Mr. Ortiz is driving. And it's this white uh, Dodge four door Ram uh, pickup, a 2015, I think. Uh, one of the troopers locates this vehicle. At a, at a Circle K, they're off San Bernardo, I think, in Jeffries. I'm not too sure, so, so I think it's San Bernardo. So he gets there, and he waits for another trooper to show up. And when Mr. Ortiz comes out, they've trained their pistol on him and once got a, a military rifle pointed at him. And they're yelling commands at him. Uh, and he panics, and he runs. He runs, eventually they find him hiding in this bed of a pickup, the SWAT officers. Now, in the interim, while the DPS troopers are asking him questions, they ask him, is that your pickup, the white Dodge Ram? And he says, yes. He doesn't abandon the truck. He doesn't say, oh no, that's not my truck. He says, that's my truck, okay? Once he's arrested, at some point, the DPS starts searching the truck there in the parking lot of the Circle K. And you're going to see that the doors are wide open. There's photographs of that. Uh, to this day, we don't know who took those photographs because the crime scene investigator that's in charge of this denied taking those photos. So we still need to figure that out. Uh, so they start searching it without a warrant. And basically, the law says that to search your property, my property, anything, especially when you assert an interest in it, you should get a warrant. And you may get a jury charge where the judge says, you decide if that search was proper. Um, they transport uh, the truck, you know, the, they call it a wrecker and they take it to the uh, Webb County substation there in Laredo. Uh, there's been testimony where they claimed that the search was what we call an inventory search. 
So sometimes what you do is you, you, know, you, you stop a car and you're going to take it in. You do an inventory. Think about what the word means, an inventory. You want to see what's in it so that if something's missing later, you've documented there was a briefcase in the back, there was this, whatever. You do an inventory. It's not a search. It's an inventory. Well, lo and behold, you find where the, the, the record driver, uh, different Webb County officers acknowledged no inventory search was conducted. But, you know, but we know a search was conducted because we have the photos. Uh, the two individuals that are supposed to be in charge of this investigation is Texas Ranger E.J. Salinas and Captain Federico Calderon of the Webb County Sheriff's. We haven't heard from Salinas, but we heard from Calderon. We said, well, you said it was an inventory, but here we have this thing that it was inventory. I don't know. Uh, Your Honor, you know, with all due respect, I, I I'm going to raise an objection in proper opening. Uh, he's bringing evidence from other hearings to to this jury. I think yeah, it's, just evidence to what you're the evidence to show yeah. in this case. Too. Well, the evidence is going to show because if he doesn't answer that, we will impeach him with that. We have the record, okay? So that's what the evidence is going to show. Um, so then. They have the truck now at the, at the storage facility. It's a secure place. It's not going anywhere. And they search it again without getting a warrant. Okay? And they collect evidence from it. Uh, and, and that too, all of us have a right, a Fourth Amendment right, to not have our items searched, whatever it might be, without due process, which would be for the police to go to a neutral magistrate. Police are police. They want to do stuff, right? They want to get evidence on you. But that's why we usually have a neutral magistrate review it and say, oh, yeah, you have the right to search this vehicle or I'm this sorry, house. Or I'm going to uh, uh, object. He's discussing... Uh, issues about law. He's talking about applicable legal. Well, the jury will get issues. Uh, an instruction from the court after all the evidence has been presented in the jury charge that would include any law applicable in this case. But at this point, just it's opening remarks, as Mr. Perez mentioned as well. Yeah, I'll with this. Okay. And the reason is you may get a charge from the court where it's going to tell you, you decide if this subsequent search, which was a search, was proper because it was without a warrant because there is law that says what exactly what I'm saying and so the court may instruct you because you are judges of the facts and the judge may instruct you and say hey you got to decide whether that that was proper and and then if it's not proper you are not to consider that evidence that's why that's important okay um, there was a, there's you're gonna find unless it changes that the evidence is going to show that to date, no one knows how they got into the truck. You know, most of us, we walk into a convenience store, at least I do. I take my keys. I lock my truck, you know. And uh, the evidence so far, and the evidence may be that to this day, we don't know how they got into the truck. And again, it's because we're focusing on the investigation. Now, we move to the interview or the interrogation, more properly stated. Uh, Mr. Ortiz. So they transport him. Uh, there are several SWAT officers that uh, at that parking lot arrest him. They say that they patted him down. Nobody mentions the truck keys. Uh, there is a video of him being transported and uh, Ortiz does mention a weapon that's in the truck. Okay. Now they have him all ready now by about 2.51 in the morning, they have him in the interview room. You know, they start talking to him. And then uh, one of the, either Calderon or Salinas, reads him his rights. Now of note is something very important. On the video, and you see this video, when they are arresting him over at the garage, right then where they, you, you go into custody, one of the deputies starts reading him his rights, you know, and the supervisor says, no, don't do that. 
because they want him over here in a controlled environment where he can't assert his rights. And so you see the video where they started to read him his rights out at the scene, and then a supervisor stopped it. He says, no, don't do that. Now they have him in a controlled environment. They're videotaping him. They read him his rights. And it's a typical way that they do it, you know, tra tra tra. And then they ask him, do you understand your rights? Yes. But they don't ask him, do you waive your rights? Understanding them and waiving them are two different things. And you see on the video that they don't ask him, do you waive your rights? And I think you're going to hear from the detective, it's not like they forget to ask you. The evidence is going to show that it's, method, it's by method, but it's by, by, by necessity on their part that they don't ask you if you waive your, your rights. Regardless, he's there, like Mr. Alanis said, he tells him, look, I'm a war veteran. I was in Iraq, you know. Uh, he's been out for a while. He's been successful. He has a wife. He has kids. He rose through the ranks of the Border Patrol fairly quickly and became a supervisor of the intelligence unit. Now, the intelligence unit, all law enforcement has them that I know of. SAPD, SAPD has an intelligence unit themselves. And they usually the idea is intelligence knows more than your average Joe out here, uh, police officer in the street, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be intelligence. Um, so, but he does tell them, I'm a war veteran. Several months ago, I started having nightmares. I started having post-traumatic stress disorder. I couldn't sleep. I went to the VA. And they gave him a, bot a bunch of uh, psychotic pills. And he gave him the name. They're there somewhere. There's a bunch of them. You know, he's under a lot of stress. He starts drinking. Uh, and then, yes, the issue of blackouts. You know, back in February, nothing was happening. He was already having trouble with his memory and the like. Mr. Lani says that, attributed to Mr. The, 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 the Salinas that said blackouts. But he actually, and by he I mean Mr. Ortiz, says, look, I've been suicidal, I've had blackouts, I'm broken, I'm tired. This is a defeated man. He's denying having been involved in these murders. And they hold him from 251, what, seven, eight, nine hours later, at 1125. It's not that they broke him. It's that Calderon or Salinas say, hey, well, 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 he's like, man, I, I miss my wife. How's my wife? We'll, we'll go get you pictures of her. We'll make sure she's taken care of. Oh, well, well what about my pension? Will she get it? We'll do, we'll get her the pension. I, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, okay? I don't remember it verbatim. They start promising him things. And then they say, hey, they walk out, they walk back in, and they say, the elected district attorney is here. Mr. Isidro Alaniz is outside. We can put in a good word for you. That's the guy in charge of his fate. And they're telling him he is not at the Justice Center, not at the courthouse. He's not a cop. This is a police department area or a Webb County Sheriff's. He's a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. This is the Justice Department over there at the courthouse, not cops. They say he's out there. Mr. Alinis is present in the building. Something along the lines, if you start talking, we'll put in a good word for you. Okay? The DA is present. Help your family. Something along those lines. That's when he shifts. And he starts talking about this murders. And he starts saying things that, honestly, Everything had been in the papers. This case received a lot of publicity in, Bear, in Webb County. And so everything was in the papers. And on top of that, on this other murder that had occurred, remember, this guy is a member of the intelligence unit. I don't know and I doubt that they know what information he has or he can get that your average captain at the Webb County SO doesn't. 
These are state officers. He's a federal officer of an intelligence unit. So God knows what kind of information he can get. And remember, he's broken. He's suicidal. He wants his family taken care of. He doesn't know where he's going to go. And he starts saying, okay, I did it. Uh, all the evidence that you have, including the firearm, no one can come in here and tell you beyond a reasonable doubt that Mr. Ortiz is the trigger man with that firearm that killed these women. You're not going to hear anyone come and tell you that he did it other than this coerced confession that the police got out of him. And this is not the first time that any of you, I'm sure, have heard about false confessions. And so I want you to keep all that in mind. This is actually a war veteran. They ran his NCIC. There's something called an NCIC, National Crime Information Center, Texas Crime Information Center, that runs your record. This man has a clean record. He's a good husband, has children. And he was in a bad situation with the VA giving him these medications that God knows what they do to you. So I want you to listen to the evidence, listen to the cross-examinations, listen to the investigation that this uh, police officer made, and uh, I believe you will find Mr. Ortiz not guilty. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. State want to call their first witness. State calls Erica Pena. So we're going to the first. You're under the same oath you took earlier, ma'am? Huh? You're under the same oath. Maybe seated. You took an oath a few minutes ago, right? What? The oath. Yes. You're under the same oath. You may be seated. Let me proceed, sir. Ms. Pena. Good morning. Good morning. Can you please? <clears throat> State your full name for the record. Erica Isamar Peña. I'm going to ask you to please uh, speak or get up close to the mic or move the mic close to your mouth. Uh, please listen to my questions. 
Answer the questions to the best of your ability. Okay. How old are you? 31. And uh, where are you from? Laredo, Texas. How long have you lived in Laredo? Born and raised. Are you married? No. Do you have any children? Yes. How many children do you have? One. Okay, and how old is your child? Twelve. Okay. Does your child live with you? Not right now. Okay. Ms. Peña, do you have a criminal record? Yes, I do. I want to talk a little bit about it. Do you know more or less how many times you've been arrested? Um, several times. Okay. Is it more than five? Yes. More than ten? Yeah. More than 15? Not sure. Okay. Um, you ever been arrested for possession of a controlled substance? Yes. Uh, can you tell the ladies and gentlemen jury what type of controlled substance you've been arrested for? Probably cocaine or heroin. Okay. And did at the, any of these cases, have they ever resulted in a conviction? You uh, found guilty? Yes. And after you were convicted, have you ever been in prison? No, never. Okay, what type of sentence have you received? I was in probation for two years. Not too long ago, I just finished. Okay. Are you currently under any type of supervision or probation right now? No, I'm done with everything. Okay. What... Uh, you ever been arrested for assaulting a police officer, resisting arrest, or terrorism? Yes. Yeah? What about uh, resisting arrest? Yes. What about terroristic threats? Yes. Um, what about any violent offenses? You ever been? Yeah. Do you suffer from any t type of addiction, Ms. Peña? No, not right now. Okay. Have you before? Yes. And what type of addiction is that? Heroin and crack. Okay. Can you tell us or tell the jury, um, well, let me ask you, are you sober right now? I take methadone. How long have you been on methadone? I've been in the methadone a year, almost a year. And where do you get that uh, that methadone? Mm, by McPherson. Do you receive services? Yes. Okay. Uh, when was the last time you were arrested? If you recall. Probably like six or five months ago. Probably six months. Was that a misdemeanor or a felony? Um, revoked for probation. Oh, okay, so you were revoked for not yeah. uh, not complying with your conditions. Yeah. Okay. And what does that entail? More drug use, or you came out dirty? No, I I just didn't go. Uh, I just didn't go and report. Okay. How long have you been dealing with this issue of substance abuse, or how long have you abused heroin, crack, cocaine? I started when I was uh, 21, on and off. And you're 31 right now? I'm 31. So is it fair to say that for 10 years you've been dealing with this yes. issue? Yes. Okay. And how were you able to support this addiction? Um, many ways. Um, Working in the streets, that was one. Um, no, it's okay, Ms. Peña. Um, I know this may be difficult, but uh, when you say working the streets, what? please tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what that means. Escorting. Escorting? Yes. And when you say escorting, what does that mean? Um working for money 
And when you say working for money. Having sex. For money. For money, yes. Okay. And how long had you been doing that? Um, on and off. Six years. You started in your early 20s? I started when I was 23. Okay. Now, on September the 14th of 2018. Yes. That was a few years ago now, right? Yes. Were you working at that yes. and doing that? Yes. Okay. Do you know why you're here today? Yes. Do you know a person by the name of Juan David Ortiz? Yes. Or David Ortiz? Can you identify him here in the courtroom <laughs> or what he's wearing? If you can please point to him. Do you see him? Yes, in and black. In black? And from where you're sitting, his, his, he's sitting, seat, seated in which chair? In the corner. In the corner, okay. So, what do you know him as? What, what, what did I knew him as? Yes. David was a friend. Okay. Now, in September of 2018, you remember that day? September. September the 14th of 2018. Yes, I do. Do you remember that day? I want to go back to that day. Okay? So you're in September. Before that. Yeah. How long had you known David? I want to say five, six months. Okay. So you, you knew him as, as early as five or six months before? No, I want to say five okay. months, six months. Okay. Somewhere okay. around there. Okay. And since the first time you met him, he was... Um, a client? I I guess you can say that. Okay. The first time. Okay. I want to focus now on what happened on the 14th, okay? Mm -hmm. Tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, on that day, where were you? On San Bernardo. Okay. And, San, and on San Bernardo... Yeah, it was a very rainy day. Okay. And um, what were you doing, or what were your thoughts? I was sitting, I was standing up, actually, um, a block from TKO, right in front of a small motel. Near a bus stop? Yes. And was it nighttime? It was, no, it was daylight. Still daylight? Yeah, it was daylight. Was it getting, starting to get late in the afternoon? No, it was early. Okay. And that, uh, what if anything happened at that time? I hadn't seen David um, in a while. I was mad because David had broken my phone. I was staying at a hotel. I... How long had you been at the hotel? Like a month. Okay. Before that day, had you been working the days before? Mm. Yeah. Which days before that? Probably in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. Not too early. Had you heard anything about any anybody being found dead? By that time, yes. And how did you feel about that? Scared. Because um, nobody knew who it was. How did you? Every, everyone was, all the girls was were watching their backs. And um, okay, the word was I'm around. Going to ask you the next question. We're doing it. Let's answer okay. the question. Next. I'm going right, to ask please. you, how, how did you feel? Frightened. When you say the girls, who are you referring to? 
Um, Jocelyn, uh, Suhey, um, are these other girls that Patty? Okay. okay, and these are girls that also work on the street. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're standing or seated right there at that corner. Yeah. What if anything happens next? What if anything happens? Yeah. Well, you said it was starting to rain or it was yeah. raining. Okay. David picked me up. Okay. Yeah. Now, when he drove up, what did he drive up in? In his white Dodge. Okay. May I approach? May I approach, Honor? I'm going to show you when I'm, what I marked as Ace Exhibit 1. Just ask you if you recognize, just if you recognize this exhibit, yes or no? Yes. Okay. And does it fairly and accurately depict what's in there? Is it is it is it a true representation of what yes. what it is? Mm -hmm. okay. States Exhibit 1 is admitted into evidence at this time. Can you tell us what, what you see in front of you on States Exhibit 1? I see a white Dodge. And who does that white Dodge belong to? David. Have you been in that white Dodge before? Yeah. How many times? I don't recall how many times exactly, but plenty of times. Was it more than five? I think so, yes. More than 10? Several times. <laughs> Plenty of times. Had he ever picked you up in any other vehicle than this one? No. Okay. How is it that uh, you would arrange to see David? How is it that? Uh, How would you meet up with with David? Sometimes he would call me. Sometimes I would just randomly see him. So you knew you knew. David for close to five months. Yes. Do you remember how you met? Yeah. How did you meet? I met him a block away from the Evelyn. It was nighttime. You met him a block away from the Evelyn. The Evelyn? The hotel. The okay. hotel. A That's, block away. Okay. In that, the corner. On the corner. Do you remember the street corner? What street it is? It's in the, the corner of the stripes. Okay. Is that Jefferson Street? Jefferson yeah. and San Bernardo? Yeah. Okay. And uh, did someone introduce you to him? No. Tell the ladies and gentlemen how you met him. I was walking and um, David stopped, asked me for a ride and I said yes. We talked for a little bit, and that first night we ended up in a hotel. And what, if anything, did you do at the hotel? We had sex. We conversated. Did he give you money? Yes. How much? I don't recall. After having sex and conversating, what if anything else happened? He drove me home. To your house? Yeah. So he knew where you lived? Yes. Okay. 
How was the, how was David? What was his personality like? Very nice. Very sweet, very funny. Normal guy. Did you ever notice any odd behavior? Never. Delusion. I don't know what happened to him. But you need to answer my question. I know you're nodding your head, but did you ever notice delusion? No. Hallucination? No. That his mind was not uh, normal? No, never. Did you ever see him depressed? I don't know, not that I recall. Did you ever see him to have anxiety in front of you? No. Anything unusual about no, David? No, never. Okay. Would David do drugs with you? No. But he would take you to the drug house? Yeah. And who would pay for the drugs? David would give me money. He would wait for you outside? Yeah. And what would, tell us typically how, to, how, how does that work? David knew um, <clears throat> my drug of choice, and um, he would wait for me outside, and um, we would drive around, conversate. Um, did, did you do that on this day, September the 14th? Did he take you to buy drugs? Yes. You up? Yes? Yeah. Yes. Did you um did you go and buy beer? Yes. Anything else that you bought? Cigarettes and beer. Okay. You mentioned the Evelyn Hotel. Yeah. Were that did you ever go there with him to the Evelyn no. Hotel? Do you remember what hotels you went with him to? Only one cactus, the was cactus. That, okay. Yes. Was that on several occasions to the cactus, or just once? I recall once. Okay. <coughs> on the other times that he would pick you up, where would you go? Sometimes we would just drive, park in any street, go to a park. Um. On September the 14th, what did you do after you bought the drugs? We went to a store. I got off. I changed because it was raining. Um, he told me we were going to his house. Did you buy anything there at the store? I bought beer and cigarettes. What, what kind of, who was the beer for? But like for who? For David. And what did you buy? Cigarettes for me and him. The beers. What type of beers were they? But like. Okay. And were they the small beers or the big beers? Just regular. Tallies. Regular tallies. Yeah. Okay. Did you have a purse with you on that day? I had a small purse, a flower purse. Remember what color it was? Pink. I'm going to show you when I'm marking the page exhibits two, three, and four. And once again, I'm going to ask you to just look at them. Go in and hold these and flip through them and see uh, if the pictures are accurate and what's in within the pictures. Yeah, I recall my bag. Well, before that, just can you look at all the pictures? Can you look at uh, number two, number three, and number four? Are those exhibits accurate? Yes. Yes? And you recognize those items in the exhibits? I recognize my bag. Okay. You recognize what's in there, correct? Yes. Okay. 
I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 2. For the record, you're offering them? Yes, I'll offer them into evidence, Your Honor. Exhibit 2, 3, and 4, you said? Yes, sir. They'll be admitted into evidence in that. Thank you. <laughs> Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what's in uh, Exhibit 2? What do you recognize from that photo? Mm, my handbag, my pink flowered handbag. Can you also see it in, in this picture? Yes. Okay. And what do you have in that handbag? I had condoms, some syringes, and I, I don't recall what else I had in there. It's been a while. Did you have that bag on September the 14th when David picked you up? Yes, I did. Okay. What else do you see in here? The tallies. The tallies? Are those the three Bud Lights that you bought for David? Yeah. After you bought the tallies, what if anything happened next? We drove to his house. Did you agree to go his, to his house? Yeah. Okay. Had you been to his house before? Yes. And uh, <coughs> remember where he lived? <coughs> yeah. What part of the city was it on? North side. The north side? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to approach. I'm going to approach again, Your Honor. I'm going to ask you if you look at these exhibits. I'm going to mark these for identification purposes as exhibits five and six. Just if you recognize it, yes or no? Not this one. Not this one? Okay. Do you know what it is, though, inside there? Yeah. Oh, yes, I recognize. So do you recognize it or not? Yes, okay. I do. Okay. Is that what that is? Exhibit, are you this sure is Exhibit five. 5. I'm going to also ask you the same thing about State's Exhibit 6. Yes. You recognize that? Okay. <coughs> Ms. Peña, hi. I'm Juan Perez, and I represent, well, I'm one of the lawyers that represents Mr. Ortiz. On this receipt here on State's Exhibit Number 5, I mean, can you read out what it says there, or is it just any receipt that... that it says, um, Powerade, Marble, Bud Light, and the $100 bill David gave me. Do you see the date on there? Where? I mean, I'm asking On you. the receipt, yes, um, trying to see. <laughs> I can't see it. 
Oh, down here. September 14, 2018. Okay, and you recognize this receipt from back yeah. then? Or you're guessing? No, I had, I went inside that store, I changed and I bought what I bought and I gave him his change back. Okay, thank you. No objections, Your Honor, to uh, five and six. Your Honor, no. All right, State's Exhibits 5 and 6 are admitted into evidence at this time for the jury's consideration. Tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, and you just answered it, but uh, yeah. what did you buy there? I buy, bought uh, Bud Light, a Powerade, and cigarettes. How many Bud Lights did you buy? I can't see. How much did you pay with or what? I, 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 David gave me a $100 bill. Okay. And what did you do with the change? I gave it back. Okay. I'm going to show you States Exhibit 6. Yes. What is that? David's house. You went there that night? September the 14th of 2018? Yes. And prior to that night, had you been there before? Yes, I have. Okay. He had taken you there before? Yes. Do you drive, Ms. Peña? I know, yeah, I know how to drive. Do you have a car? No. Have you ever driven to this place yourself? No. How did you previously get to this house? Um, David picking me up. So you get to his house. What, what exactly happens when you, when you get there? Um, I sit on, on the corner of the table. Where? In the in the. In what part of the house? In the, next to the kitchen. Okay. Is yeah. there anybody home at this time? No, just me and him. Okay. Do you know if David's married? Yeah, I knew. Okay. Where was his wife? I'm thinking McAllen. Okay. Do you know if he has children? Two. Okay. Where were his children? With the baby mama. Uh, had he told you they were out of town or? Yeah. You're sitting at the table in the corner near the kitchen. What, if anything, are you doing? What am I doing? Yes. I'm dissolving the heroin. I shoot up. Okay. And what what if anything happens next? David goes to the bathroom, comes out with a mouthwash. The mouthwash for you or for him? For me. Okay. Do you do you use No, I didn't use it. Okay. He had asked me to take a shower before um, having sex. Okay. Were you able to have sex with him? No, we didn't have sex that night. Um, Up until this point, was everything okay? Up as soon as we entered the house, David wasn't himself anymore. I saw him... Just not himself, very nervous. Mm -hmm. um, how, did, how did he begin to become nervous? What were you all, if anything, talking about? We were talking about some other stuff, then um, all of a sudden he said that he was afraid that they would check his DNA because he was second to last to be with Melissa. And... 
What was your response to that? What did you I tell told him that if he ha if he didn't have nothing to do, he shouldn't be scared. Okay. So but what else? What if anything do you do next to calm him down? Do you stay there in the kitchen? I yeah, I started shaking. He noticed me when I got scared. Okay. And what do you do next? Where do you go? I'm grabbing the cigarettes, shaking. Okay. You I grab the cigarettes? Huh? You, you said you grab the cigarettes? Yeah. And do you stay in the kitchen or do you go somewhere no, else? No, I ask him if he goes with me to smoke outside. Okay. And um, we're outside and... What if anything happens while you're outside? What if anything happens? Yeah. What else happened when you were outside? Um, I sat on a chair because by that time I felt scared. I would, I didn't want to give him my, give him my back. Mm -hmm. Um. Did you have your phone with you? No. I had asked him inside if, if I could call my if mom and. Okay. Stay. Um, you didn't have a phone. No, I did not have a phone at that at, time. At any time that you were there, did you attempt to call anyone? I asked him if I could call my mom. Did you call your mom? No. Why not? I think... I think he said, hold on. I'll lend it to you in a bit. Okay. So he... He ignored your request. He ignored my, yeah. Okay. Do you stay outside or do you go back in? We're outside and um, I tell him I forgot something in the truck and I I head towards the front door and I, as soon as I step outside, I start vomiting because I felt very nauseous, very nervous. Why were you feeling nauseous? Why were you feeling nervous? I just, I don't know. I just felt scared and nauseous. What were you scared of? I just got this feeling. What feeling? What was David doing that made you scared? Well, you are actually... What, what, if, what if anything... Huh? Okay, what if anything caused you to get scared? When he said he was second to last, that kept me. Thinking. Thinking what? That maybe he was the one. He was the one that what? That had been murdering. That was in your head? That was in my head, yeah because he had never been nervous. Okay. After you throw up, what happens next? I think I tell him that maybe it's because I haven't, I, ha I had not ate anything all day. And then what happens next? He says, we'll stop at a, we'll stop somewhere to grab a burger. Okay. Do you leave his house? We Did both get in the truck. He locks his, I think he locked the house and got inside the truck. Before, before you left his house, did, did you, did you complete the act of having sex with him? No. But you were there for that? Yeah. How many times? I don't recall. How, how many times had you been with David sexually? I don't recall. Okay. 
Is it more than five? No, I don't recall. Okay. Uh, would what when you had sex with him? Was it intercourse or oral sex or what kind of sex? Oral sex, foreplay. Um, Had you ever seen David without his clothes on? Yes. Without his clothes on? Without his shirt, yeah. When when you would have sex, you would be both The naked. first time okay. we went into his house, okay. we laid in his couch. Okay. Did David have any markings on his body? Two tattoos, two hummingbirds. Okay. In his chest. Any other tattoos that you recall him having? Mainly those two. Okay. Would you give him that one? I'm going to show you, if I may approach on uh, State's Exhibit 7 and 8. said you had been with David before just to ask you if you seven. I'm showing you exhibit seven do you recognize um, what's in that photo you need to answer verbally yes yes okay. and is it an accurate photo of how he looked around that time yes okay and I'm going to show you exhibit number eight is that also an accurate picture yeah. Are you familiar with what's in that photo? A another tattoo. Are, are you familiar with what's in that photo? A tattoo. The answer is yes or no. Are yes. you familiar with what's yes. in that photo? Okay. And he had these markings mm -hmm. Yes. on that day? Yes. And you're offering them? I'm offering them, Your Honor. States, States Exhibit 7 and 8 are admitted into evidence at this time. Okay. So you remember and you testified, you can tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Exhibit 7. Now you could talk about the tattoos. What are the tattoos that he... They look like two hummingbirds, those chuparrosas. Chuparrosas? Se, a mí se ven como dos chuparrosas. So what you're saying is to you they look like two... Hummingbirds. Hummingbirds. Okay. Yeah, to me. Okay. Uh, what else does he have? A, f a flag. A sign. Did he have those tattoos uh, with you or on his body when he was with you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is Exhibit 8. Have you seen that too be tattoo before? Yes. Okay. And that was when you guys were together. Together. Okay. One through eight. Can I publish one through eight to, to the jury, Your Honor? So you're going to go get a hamburger. Tell us uh, what happens next. David parks behind a tractor and just says, wait, hold on. Pulls out a gun. When you say tractor, is that a tractor? A trailer. Tractor trailer? Tractor, yeah. Like an 18-wheeler? Like one of these? No, like a truck driver. Oh, a truck driver, a big yeah. tractor. Yeah. That pulls a box. Yeah. And where does he... Is this in front of the store? Uh, behind. Behind the store? Yes. Okay. And what did, what did you, why didn't he park in front of the store? 
I don't know. Okay. What, if anything, happens next? Um, as soon as he uh, took out the gun, he just stared at me, didn't say anything. I opened the door. Let's back up a little bit. Yeah. How were you feeling when he stopped there behind the store? Nervous. Did he say anything to you? No. I remember telling him if he could go answer drop me answer, off. Answer, answer, can't wait for the next question. Let me answer the question that's being asked, please. Did Thank you me. say anything to him? If he could go drop me off. Drop you off where? Where he had picked me up. So you wanted him to take you back? Yeah. To where he picked you up on San Bernardo? Yeah. What did he say? He didn't say anything. Okay. So you're, par you're, you're parked there. It's nighttime. Mm -hmm. You're behind a tractor, behind the store. Yeah. Then what happened? <clears throat> Some way, somehow, I took off running without a shirt. Before that, inside the truck, tell us about what you remember when he pulled the gun. He's trying to grab me by my left shoulder. Where did he get the gun from? Had you seen the gun? I had not seen it, no. What, if anything, did he do with the gun? He just pointed it right at me. When he pointed it at you, show the ladies and gentlemen of the jury where he pointed to you. Right here at my face. Right at your face? Hold up your hand and, and show us how... Just like this. With his left arm. With his left arm? Yeah. He put the gun next to your face. Yeah. What else, if anything, did he do while he's pointing the gun With at his your face? right <coughs> arm, trying to hold me back from not getting off. How did you get away? I took off running. I snapped. Mm -hmm. You got off the truck? You said without your blouse? Yeah. What happened to your blouse? I don't know. How did you lose your blouse? I don't even know. Everything happened so fast. He stayed with your blouse? I don't know. Did you pull off your blouse? Some way, somehow, I um, got out that blouse. What did you do after you got off his truck? I run to the store and there's a trooper. I'm crying hysterically. I'm sorry? Repeat that? I run to the store and there's a trooper putting gas. Okay, and what do you do? I go up to him. What do you what do you tell him? That um someone had just pulled out a gun at, at me. this time nervous shaking what did you tell the trooper if you remember that we were at his house and um, that we were at his house and um, I got scared. I ran outside. We went to the store. Were you afraid he was going to hurt you? Somewhere in my mind, I had those thoughts. I don't know how, but I did. What did the trooper do after you? 
ask him for help. He's freaking out. <laughs> He's freaking out. Um, he takes me to the police station. What happens when you get to the police station? I tell them my story. Okay. Do you remember how many officers you were speaking to? Like three or four. Okay. What do you tell them? That, um, that I knew David and that he had pulled out a gun at, at me. Okay. Did you provide any other information about David? Yeah, I told them where he lived. Okay. And how were you able to tell them where he lived? They took me and I pointed at his house. Okay. Did you know the name of the street? By that day, I don't remember now, but that day I did look at the streets and all I said is, remember this street. Okay. So that night the officers take you to the neighborhood and you point out the house. Yeah, I recognize it right away. After you show them the house, what happens next? I think they start pulling up pictures. And I said, yeah, that's him. At that time, September the 14th of 2018, did you know where David worked? Yeah. Where, where did you know? I knew he was a supervisor with Border Patrol. Okay. Did you know that from the very beginning? You met him five Not months ago? Not from the very beginning, no. Okay. At the beginning, where did you think he worked? <coughs> did you know he was law enforcement the first time you met him? No, not the first time, no. When did you find out he was law enforcement? One time when he took me to go score. He had a, the shirt inside out. He got off. And um, he had a shirt inside out. Please describe to the jury what does that mean? The uniform inside out. And that's the day I found out. He told me that he was a Border Patrol. Did you also have any personal knowledge of David being a client of any of your friends? Excuse me? Did you know if David was also a client of some of your friends? Melissa. I didn't know about the, I didn't know anything about the rest. I knew he was friends with Melissa. You know how long he had been friends with Melissa? Not exactly the time, no. Okay. Did he ever talk to you about Melissa? Yeah. Do you know if he was seeing both you and Melissa? Yeah. At the same time? Yeah. Around the same time? Around the same time, yeah. He was seeing both you and do you know if he was also seeing Melissa? Yes. Okay. Do you know if he would take Melissa to buy drugs? Okay. If you know, if you know. I don't recall that. Okay. Had you seen him picking up Melissa before on the boulevard? I think before meeting him, I saw his truck. Melissa had short hair. She was sitting under a tree. By that time, David didn't 
know who I was. So he knew Melissa longer than you? Yeah. Okay. Had you ever seen Melissa at the county jail? Yeah. Yeah? How long did you know Melissa? Quite a while. What is quite a while? A couple of years. Okay. Are you familiar? And I'm just going to ask you if you recognize yeah. the, the person in this picture. Yeah. I'm sure you could have tell me. You recognize this person in this picture? Yes. You know her? From the streets, yeah. Do you recognize the person? Exhibit 11. Yeah. Do you recognize the person? Exhibit 12. Yes. These women were all friends of yours. Yeah. No, because there's no one to offer these drawings. All right, states exhibits 9, 10, 11, and 12 are admitted into evidence at this time. So you knew Melissa for how long? Four years. Did she also work on the street? Yeah. Did she also abuse drugs? Yes. What about Colleen? A year or two. You worked on some Bernardo? Yes. Not, not Claudine. Giselda Cantu? Years. For years. Was she a friend? Yeah, years. Okay. Since I started. Since you started when you were 23? 23, yeah. Okay. And did she also use drugs? Yes. What would you call her? Chelly. Chelly? Yeah. What about this person? Janelle. How long mm. did you know Janelle? Years. Okay. Was she a friend of yours? My best friend. And would she also use drugs? Yes. Was she also arrested a few times? Yeah. As your best friend, would you all hang out? 
Or what would you do? Me and Janelle, the same. Walk, make money. Outside of that type of work, did you guys hang out? Yeah, Janelle would go to my house. What type of person? Hang out, funny. As to the last question, what type of person she was? Well, I mean, I want to make sure he doesn't get into. Overruled on that question, you can. Or did you get into? Janelle was funny. Yeah, Janelle was funny, uh, very caring, had a lot of friends. Her personality. Yeah, was outstanding. You know Chetty's personality? How was she? Was she Very a calm. A calm person. Was she peaceful? Calm. Yeah, very calm. What kind of person was Chetty? Very calm. Did you ever have any interactions with her? S I don't. I don't recall how many times, but um, a couple of times. Okay. Never had any problems with her? No. Okay. And what about Melissa? What kind of person uh, was Melissa? Funny. Um, very funny. Um, she was fun to be around. Yeah, she would lighten up. She entered the room. Um, I want to continue where we left off, and that was when you said that once you showed him where where he lived, you go back to the station, and they show you pictures, they they investigate the, the house, you said they show you a picture, you identify him as the person, uh, and what, what happens after that? Like three, four hours, mm -hmm. um, he gets caught. When he got caught, were you still there? And the police station? Yes. Yes. You were at the police station in a, in a room? Yeah. Okay. Did you have to do anything else that night? No. Okay. okay. During the time that you knew that he was a law enforcement officer, did he, did he had ever, ever at any time um, go and see you during his working hours? I just answered that question, yes. When he would see, and I'm sorry I didn't hear uh, if it was during his working hours. I know you said that he w had his shirt turned inside out, but during his working hours, he, he would go and see you. When he would get out of work. Okay. Um, any other times that uh, you saw him, was he ever in any government vehicle? No, never. Okay. Not vehicles. Okay. Um, besides that one time when his shirt was turned inside out, did he ever go in and visit you with any other type of uniform? Not that I recall. Okay. And the times that you went to his house, uh, please describe his house to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury.
Did he have a lot of furniture? Was it very little furniture? Was it it's a, a nice house? Okay. Did you see any family pictures there while you were there? I don't recall family pictures. Did you ever see any photos on the stands, on the tables, on the coffee table? Mm, I don't recall photos. At all? Okay. The other time that you went to see, that you went to his house, where was his family, if you know? Out of town. How many times did you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, did he take you to his house? Um, probably two. Two times before this last time? Yeah. And on those two other occasions, did you also have sex with him that, those times? The day we went to his house, no. No, but those other previous times you were there, did you shower there? No. Did you have sex with him? No. Did you perform oral sex on him? The other times that you went? No. Did he give you money? Yes. Okay. Other times, did you ever perform or have sexual activities with him in his vehicle? Yes. Where? In the parking area. The parking area of what Walmart, location? Walmart. Um, behind the motel. You also would go to the parks with him, you said? Yeah. Okay. Would this be during the day or would this be during the night? Night. How many times, if you recall, did he take you to go score, as you say it? I don't recall. Okay. He would pay for the drugs? Yes. Okay. We'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Mr. Perez, can you approach Mr. All right, so it's uh, it's 1 p.m. We're going to go ahead and take a, a lunch recess at this point. Uh, I'll ask everyone to please be back by 2.15. Uh, I understand there's a cafeteria here in the building, and then there's several restaurants nearby. Um, so I'll ask you all to, again, uh, remind you not to discuss the facts of the case with anyone, uh, not to watch any news accounts or read any newspaper articles regarding this case. The previous instruction I've given you in the past. And uh, Mr. Medina, can you excuse everyone? Uh, All right, to the jury. To the jury. For 2.15, please. Two fifteen, yes. We'll start like by two thirty.
Sixth District Court is back in session. You can bring the defendant in, please. You may be seated for now. There's some here actually. Did you find out about the rubber situation? In case they needed one, do they need one? Do we have someone? It's warmer. It's, it's supposed to get up to. So you here? Do you feel it okay? Oh, I feel it fine. I feel it perfect. I'm usually freezing in the courtroom, and I'm not. I'm usually freezing. It's very perfect. Oh, you're cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's that robe, Judge. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we have the defense ready. Uh, is the state ready? I think uh, I see Mr. Alanis walking in. Mr. Dyla, you're in charge for now.
You may be seated. <coughs> All right, Mr. Perez, now you may proceed. Yes. Peña, I'm Joel Perez, and this is Raymond Fuchs, and we represent Juan David Ortiz. Uh, and I've previously met you because we had a hearing back on October the 3rd of 2019, correct? Yes. Do you recall that? Yeah. Okay, and just to get a history, you stated your, your drug addiction started when you were 21? Is that what you said? Yeah. And how old are you now, ma'am? 31. Okay. Um, and your child is 12? Yeah. Right now? Right now. Now, back <coughs> in, on October the 3rd of 2019, you were in a rehab facility when you testified in court. Do you recall that? Yes. <coughs> and, you know, that's what, maybe three, three, four years ago? And today, are you in a rehab facility again? No, I'm not in a rehab. Okay, but you said you're on methadone. I take methadone. Okay, is that is that medically prescribed? Yeah, that's medically prescribed. Okay, and uh, if you were in rehab back in 19, why do you need methadone today? Why do I need methadone today? Yes. Because um, I would have my downfalls. Okay. So, I gather that the rehab didn't wasn't successful back in 2019. I guess you can say. Okay. That. And um, the um, the prosecutor was asking you about what you did for a living, and in essence, it's prostitution. Yes. Would that be accurate? Yeah. And I'm not trying to offend you, ma'am. I'm no, just going to okay. make sure I get to the point. Yeah. Um, and this prostitution, and if you remember the testimony from last time, it's basically to support your drug habit. Yes. Okay. And your drug habit, uh, you call them your DOC, your drugs of choice. DOC, yeah. Is heroin and, and crack. crack. You also do what's in the street called bars, which is Xanax. Yes. And that's not prescribed, right? That's stuff you buy on the street. Yeah. And you also smoke some marijuana, correct? Not oftenly, but yes. Okay. <clears throat> and, um, and then back then you also testified that uh, your child, you saw him Maybe sometimes every six months, sometimes Her. every three months, stuff like that, right? Yeah. Okay. And you said, uh, even though it's your child, a relative is raising your child. Yes. Okay. And I would imagine that part of that reason is because you do drugs. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, when... When you say uh, back on September the 14th of 2018 that you were scared because the murders had occurred, correct? Yes. Uh, but you weren't scared enough to stop prostituting because you were still out on the streets, right? When? Well, we know on September 14th yeah. of 2018 you claim that you were with Mr. Ortiz. Yes. And according to your testimony, it was for prostitution. Yes. Okay. And we know because you've testified that you have a daily habit. That I had a daily habit. Yes. I, I'm not saying right now. I'll yeah. Okay. I'll, I'm talking either 2018, 2019, something like that. Yeah. And so your daily habit consisted of maybe sometimes up to $300 worth of heroin black tar on top of that yeah. per day, correct? Mm -hmm. And about $100 of crack cocaine. Yes. You would agree with me that that's a lot of drugs to use daily. Yeah. Right? And just, you know, I don't know if everybody knows, but uh, the, the heroin is the kind where you get a spoon, you heat it up, you put it in a syringe, and then you inject yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then... Would it be fair to say then that you've been doing, injecting yourself maybe for the last 10 years? On and off. On and off. <clears throat> yeah. And the crack cocaine typically uh, is smoked in a pipe. Yeah, it's an upper. You put it in a pipe 
and it's a glass pipe or something like that, and you, you know, from what I read, you uh, use a lighter and then you smoke it and it gets you high. Yeah. And you also testified that your modus operandi, if you will, uh, in using drugs is you use crack in the morning or early to get you high, and then you use heroin in the afternoon to bring you down. No, first heroin and then crack. Okay. I thought you had testified the other way around, but, but you know, but regardless, you use both of them yeah. daily, correct? Um, now, you know, I mean, as compared to a guy that drinks every day or something like that, he's going to be hungover and he's going to be not feeling the greatest. I'm assuming that doing crack and heroin in those amounts is not the best thing for your body or your mental health. Of course me. not, okay. yeah. Uh, now, back on September the 14th of 2018, uh, you met, according to you, with Mr. Ortiz, and uh, you're the one that inquired about, had you heard about the murders of Melissa? Yeah, when he picked me up. Uh, but Ortiz didn't bring it up. No, I brought it up. Okay. And uh, even though you were frightened uh, at, at either at the Not murder, at that time. Okay. At some point when you said he started acting differently, let's say, according to you, you when we got to sorry. his house. When we got to his house. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. That was the first time he had ever acted off. Okay. Other than that. Very normal. Okay, but at that time, you were still getting high regularly. Yeah, but to the point where I know what's going on. Um, I was high, but I know what, what what's going on. Mm -hmm. Well, I assume every person that, that uses mind-altering drugs yeah. claim that, right? A guy yeah. that drinks a 12-pack, he's gonna go, hey, I know what's going on. Yeah, I know what's that, right? going on. I'm alert. I'm still alert. Uh huh. I'm sure you were. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, you testified that um, you still shot up the heroin, though. That 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 at happened. his house. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because you were there between six and nine, and you said, you know, you drove around for a while drinking the beer. And then uh, shooting the heroin. I shot up the heroin when, when we got um, to his house. Okay. Yeah. Now, and again, I'm not trying to be offensive. No, it's okay. Are, are you high right now? Somewhat high? No. Are you on the? Uh, you're not here totally clear headed, are you? Yes, I am. Are you under the effects of methadone? Yes. Okay, I methadone. take methadone. I'm sorry? Yes, I do. I, I'm on methadone. Okay, and methadone in essence is a synthetic heroin, correct? Method, methadone is just, um, it's to block uh, any triggers. Well, no, what it is actually is a synthetic heroin that is utilized to avoid... To well, well, I'm with, with, with her. She's she's not, and that's not, this is not relevant. Questioning well, well, he's being, he's well, being well, argumentative let, with let, her. Let me address it this way. Uh, ask a question because you're, you're giving testimony instead of asking the question. You're, you're explaining what that is. That you're not a witness on the okay. stand. So but she's, it's question. been asked and answered, Your Honor, okay. uh, that if she's Re toxic. Rephrase the question. Drugs. Okay. Are you aware that methadone is a synthetic heroin? No, it's not a synthetic heroin. Okay. Are you aware that it's utilized? to regulate the effects on the human body of people that are hooked to heroin. That have been on heroin throughout the years. Yes. It's to keep them sober. Okay. Yeah. And so... It, and I know so, what methadone is. Okay. And so, well, let me ask you this. What effect does it have on you, methadone, as opposed Nothing. to not taking it? Um, it's just uh, to concentrate, just... Um, not to, it's, it doesn't trigger me. 
why it doesn't cross my mind to use. <clears throat> well, uh, well, the idea is, uh, and I'm asking you, is it to reduce the need to have to use heroin? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, Now, Mr. Alanis showed you uh, a photo of Melissa, correct? Correct. And you said that uh, previously in the testimony that Melissa also worked the streets. Yes, correct? correct. And that she had problems with drugs, correct? Correct. Uh, and she did it to support her sat her habit by by selling her body, correct? Correct. Okay. And then you were asked about Claudine, and you testified that she also had a problem with addiction. Correct. And that Claudine also worked the streets to support her habit. Correct. And you were asked about Janelle, and you testified that Janelle also had a drug addiction. Correct? Correct. And that uh, Janelle worked the streets to support the drug habit. Correct. Okay. Now, when, when you asked, according to you, Mr. Ortiz, if he had seen the news about the murder, uh, or, or that, that he, uh, had he heard about it, his response that he said, he just saw it in the news. That was I response. mentioned it and he said he, that he had found out through the news. Okay. Yeah. And <clears throat> according to you, he starts acting differently or whatever, weird, according to you. And you testified that, uh, that you heard a voice. You actually heard a voice. What I meant by that is my inner voice, my intuition. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I get that people have gut feelings, okay? Yeah. But <clears throat> you testify, I heard a voice. And I asked you that said what? For me to get out fast. Okay, do you remember testifying yeah. to that? Okay. Let me just find this, okay? Okay, and then at some point, and I think this is me questioning you now, and you testified that you heard a voice, and just tell me if you recall saying this. Yes, I did. Uh, question, and that this voice told you, get out of there, or what did the voice tell you specifically? Just Answer, to get out. To get out of the house. Just to get out, yeah. And I think I asked you, and did you hear the voice in English or in Spanish? Did you hear the voice in English and Spanish? It's Excuse me, ma'am. Your answer was Spanish. Do you remember testifying to that? It's not a remember if I said English or Spanish, but... Um. Okay, and then uh, you were asked, question, was it a female Spanish voice or a male yeah, voice? Yeah, I said... And you testified it was a male yeah, voice. Yeah, my ex that passed away. Okay. Kind of like him telling me. Uh huh. So it's that's <clears throat> different than a gut feeling. So you're hearing a male voice in Spanish. Not like hearing a voice, but like kind of him Ma telling if, me. If you might let me well, finish I'm asking the question. She could, she, could, she could be allowed to answer. She well, was just if I can answer, finish the question, and you are. didn't like the response. No, it's not she, that. I was still answer. answering the question. Well, you I was asking a question. You're making it sound like you want to One second, Miss, one second. Don't answer no. the question. No. She's unresponsive, sure. Your Honor. If I'm instructing her, you need to also wait. Okay. I mean, that's fine. You want me to give an instruction or not? Yes, Your Honor. Wait until he asks the question, okay. until he completes asking the question, and then you can answer the question. And if it's non-responsive, you need to object instead of interrupting the witness, please. Go ahead and re-ask your question, sir. Thank you. Okay. My question is, did you not testify that you heard a male voice 
in Spanish. And yes, said, I do. To get out of there. Yes, I okay. do. But it's not like a not crazy voice. Not responsive, Your Honor. I'm going to object to not responsive. Okay, wait for the next question, Michael. <laughs> And um, wh when you claim you went to the trooper, uh, you were high, right? When you went to the trooper on yes, September I was. 14, 2018? Yeah. Can I get this go along the lines of what you said that, if I may, doing heroin and cracking those amounts aren't the best thing for the body or the mind. And you agreed with that, correct? Yes, I agree, of okay. course. <clears throat> now, on September the 14th, 2018, when you testified today, and you were very graphic about it upon the questions of Mr. Alanis, mm -hmm. and you said that, uh, you were demonstrating for him. I'm just trying to refresh your memory. And you said that according to you, Mr. Alanis pointed the gun to your face, correct? And you put the gun to your face. That Ortiz had pointed the gun. Yes. Yes, I did. And, and, and you remember that as clear as day. Of course. Yes, because I guess not too many of us get a, a gun pointed at our face. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and, and, and you're as sure of that today as you are of any of your other testimonies. Of course, it's not forgettable. Because you're testifying under oath, right? I'm here to say the truth and nothing but the truth. Okay. And, and that's something that's very memorable. You just said that now. Yeah. Back on October the 3rd of 2019, you were also on the oath before this judge to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, correct? Correct. And if I were to tell you that you were asked, and where did he point it to you? You said, right here. Where, to your chest? Answer, yes. You're pointing to your chest, yes. Do you recall testifying to that man? No. Well, are you lying today or were you lying then? Never. If I might just make some real quick review, you know. show you an official copy of a transcript uh, dated the third day of October 2019 in this cost number of the state of Texas versus Juan David Ortiz mm -hmm. and it's certified by a certified court reporter wherein he swears that this is accurate. Where and what? Wherein it certifies that this is an accurate reporting of the, of the proceedings on that day. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just going to show you the, the transcript where you were asked, and you, can you read that for me, just this, this part right here? Uh, 
where did he where did he point it to right here right to your chest it's just same well, thing ma'am ma i'm just asking you can you read it and see what you said to your chest yes and you're pointing to your chest yes okay that's all i needed to okay You also testified that you've never engaged in, in violence because you said criminal trespass and the like, but not violence. Is that what you testified to? No, I'm going to object. That's a mischaracterization. She actually I, she answered that she had been arrested for violence. I had asked her that question. Do you want to rephrase the question? Well, have you ever been convicted for act, criminal acts of violence? Violence. Mm. Well, let me ask you. I had this. probation for aggravated assault. Would you think that that's a violent offense, <coughs> or do you think it's a peaceful offense? Mm. It was. It was not physical. It was something I said. Okay. Aggravated no. assault for something you said. Aggravated assault for something I said. Yeah. And is this the assault on a peace officer, on a policeman? No, this was a family violence. Okay, but on April the 30th of 2019, do you not have one for assault on a peace officer? I don't recall. So, so you're telling me that you've been arrested and you don't recall what charges you've been arrested for? I've been in and out, um, but that I had a warrant for, for what? Assault on a peace officer. No. Do you know what a peace officer is? A cop. A cop, yes. And so no. according to this, you assaulted a police officer on April the 30th of 2019. Do you have any recollection of that? I don't recall. Because you were high? Maybe, probably, I don't recall. Because it affects, the, the drugs affect your memory? Your ability to remember things accurately, maybe that's why? A little bit, I don't recall that. Or a lot. It's been a long time. Well, 2019 is after 2018, you realize that, right? Well, I don't recall, a lot of things have, have, have happened. It's a lot to take in. I pass the witness, Your Honor. You say it's a lot to take in. What, after, after this happened to you, Yeah. how did it affect you? I got diagnosed with PTSD, severe anxiety, and um, depression. Did you feel your life was threatened? I'm going to object to the leading, Your Honor, and it's not relevant, Your Honor, I'm afraid. Couple of things. You started to explain about the voice. Yeah. You, I'd like for you to explain. Let me ask you this. Was the voice an audible voice like my voice is now? No. 
Did you hear the voice from the sky? No. Did you hear the voice? With an objective leading you on it. Like an inner voice, like a gut feeling, just like. Um, and you also mentioned it was a male's inner, yeah, um, a, a male's voice. Tell the jury about that. Kind what, of like what, what my intuition, mean? because we, me and him, lasted for a very long time. Who is and him? Who my is ex that passed away. I remember mentioning him that night, and um, I just had an intuition of him saying, get out. So the inner voice that you tried to explain to Mr. Pettis is your ex who passed away. Yeah. That told you, Erica, get out. Just, yeah. Not like a loud voice, like an in your inner voice. Your inner we, voice. We, yeah. Okay. A gut feeling, just an image. It's wait, wait for the next question. And you listened to your inner voice. I listened to my inner voice, to my gut feeling. What other, what other signs did you have that you, when you say he's acting weird? Can you give us any examples when you say he's acting weird? I just, I've been saying it over and over. He was just not himself that day, very nervous. At the time that he picked you up, did he, did, 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 did the topic come up about... Uh, I brought it up when we were by Clark, and uh, the only thing he said was, what's the word? What are they saying? And that's about it. Nothing else. What's the word? Yeah. I told him that they had been no, picking up people to investigate. Oh, hold on. You said he, he asked you, what's the word? Yeah. When, when you say that, what 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 did you take it to mean? When he asked you, what's like, the word? What's going on? Okay. Yeah. Did you respond to that? I just said that they were picking people up. Who was picking people up? Investigators. Everyone knew. Um, up up until this time, and answer, wait for my question. Up until up until this time, September the fourteenth. Did you have knowledge of some of the some of the girls on the boulevard being picked up by investigators? Yes. Okay. Had you been picked up for? No, I had not been picked up. Okay. Were you ever asked by Ortiz if you had been picked up? No. And you, you've also testified that, and, and this, this came up, how long have you been taking methadone? Um, right now? Yes. Like eight months, Okay. six months. Have you relapsed during the time that you've been taking methadone? No. How long have you been sober? I have been sober since January. Are you currently <laughs> working? No, I was working. What were you doing? I was a housekeeper in Hotel Marriott Residence Inn. Okay. And how are you maintaining your living at this point in time? Um, I have housing and um, I'm seeing someone that's helping me. Okay. So are you doing better today since uh, 2018 when this happened? Yeah. In the beginning, it was. If you can explain the difference between where you're at now in your life and when it happened. And if there's relevance, you want. Wait one second. Sustain. The issue about the gun that Mr. Perez asked. Were you lying on October the 3rd of 2019 at that hearing? No. You started to explain, and I'd like for you to explain to the jury what you meant uh, when the gun was being pointed at you. Yeah. Was, uh. was, go ahead. 
What did I mean? He just pulled it out and didn't say anything. Just right in front of me. At your person? At you? In yes. The, at you, at Erica me. Ben. Yes. Okay. And I, as soon as he did that, I opened the door. Some way, somehow, I was able to get off my shirt and... I run to the store. Right. And, and we've been through that. We've been through that. Yeah. But when he's pointing the gun at you, at yeah. your person, at your head, your face, your body, your chest, wherever he's pointing it at, you said it was with his left hand, correct? Yeah. And he's holding your blouse with the right. Yes. What are your feelings at that moment? Scared. Scared? Even Scared for your for life? For my life. No further questions. Any further crossword? Yes. Your Honor. Um, the state would request that if uh, Ms. Pena could be released from the rule. Any objection? Yeah, we're not too sure about that. Your Honor, we might use it. You might be calling her as yes. a witness again. We might, depending on whatever the evidence is developed, Your Honor, we may want to continue cross-examination of her. We're not excusing her. Well, this is your opportunity to cross-examine her, but if you're, you're saying well, you may call her and you're... We don't know what... May we approach this briefly? Sure. So, Ms. Pena, is she still in the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. You're, you're still under the rule, so you need to remain waiting outside of the courtroom, and you're not allowed to uh, watch the, the case or any news accounts. Tell her she's not to discuss it with anyone. She's been given that instruction earlier. Okay. <clears throat> Trooper Francisco Hernandez. Trooper Francisco Hernandez. Was he one of the witnesses this morning? Yes, he was.
Remember the same oath you took this morning? You can take the stand, please. Thank you. Isidro Lanis, I'm the district attorney for Webb and Zapata counties. Uh, could you please state your name for the record? Yes, it's uh, Francisco Javier Hernandez, sir. And how are you currently employed? Uh, I'm employed with the Texas Department of Public Safety as a state trooper. How long have you been a state trooper? I've been uh, about 17 years, sir. Okay. Are you a certified peace officer in the state of Texas? Yes, sir. Uh, please tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what your duties are as a state trooper. Uh, as a state trooper, uh, my part of my duties is to uh, protect and enforce the traffic law and criminal laws in the state of Texas and uh, preserve the peace to the citizens of uh, the state of Texas. Thank you, sir. Now, I want to direct your attention to the night of September the 14th of 2018. Do you, were you on duty that night, sir? Yes, sir. Were you in uniform? Yes, sir. Can you, um, um, were you in a marked DPS unit? Yes, sir. Okay. Please uh, tell us that, take us back to that night uh, in the evening, shortly before 9 p.m. What were you doing? Um... <clears throat> So on that day, on that night, um, I was at the gas station at the intersection of Loop 20 and um, McPherson Road. Um, I can't recall if I had just finished gassing up the patrol unit or I was about to. <clears throat> uh, when all of a sudden, um, Mrs. Uh, there was a lady uh, approaching me from the backside west side of the stripes or circle K towards my direction and um, as soon as I noticed that um, she was she I heard she, I heard her um, yelling for help I immediately noticed that she was um, in shock uh, her breathing was was kind of rapid like hyperventilating I also noticed that she was scared at that time, and um, she explained to me that she had just gotten away from a gentleman um, that pointed a gun at her, and uh, at that time I assured her that she was in safe, safe hands, and I was going to try my best to, to analyze the situation, what was at hand. And um, she told me she had been assaulted, and then I took proper action after that. Do you recall what she was wearing? She was uh, she was only with a bra. She was coming. She was running towards me, just covering her her chest, and uh, just uh, some white pants, I believe. Her emotional state. Can you describe that? She was scared. I could sense right away that she was she was scared and uh, fearing for her life. Was she in an excited state? Uh, she was... In an alert state? She was in alert. Um, she was she was real concerned with the assailant that attacked her, I guess, and, and trying to see if that person was still around. Um, I assured her that she was in good hands and, and I was going to keep an eye out for her assailant while she was there with me. Did she give you a name of the assailant at that time, if at, you recall? Um, yes, after after she explained to me, explaining to me how she got away, uh, she she told me the, the the name of the person that attacked her was uh, by the name of David. 
Just the name David. Yes. And yes when sir. you say attacker, what description of the attack did she say? Um, that she was trying to, I guess, if I remember correctly. Um, Your Honor, I'm going to object to hearsay at this time. Your Honor, she's already stated she was in an alert and excited state. This is an excited utterance that she made to him. Well, Your Honor, it's not clear where along the conversation it is. Is she in the patrol car now and things are calm or what? This, um, I can, I ask, can, I, I can I, rephrase. Go ahead. This, uh, these statements being made to you by her, where are they taking place? Okay, so um, I would say at the, I mean, um, the very first couple of seconds or minutes, I can recall, it was outside of the patrol car. Okay. And then because of her safety, I put her in the back seat of the my driver's side door. Okay. And I sat at her there. So is she is sitting facing you in the back seat or is she? She's facing me uh, while I'm outside of the patrol unit. The door opened or closed? Uh, the door in the back is open, yes. But so the, the door's open, she's seated in the back seat facing you? Correct. She's scared? Yes, sir. And she's telling you what just happened to her? Yes, sir. And she used the word she escaped? She escaped, yes, sir. And she used the word that she was scared? That she was scared for her life, yes. Afraid for her life? Yes. And that she knew the assailant? Yes, sir. And did she tell you when when this happened? Yes. When? Uh, that same uh, couple of seconds or minutes just before approaching me. So it literally happened just seconds before she ran to you? Yes, sir. Okay. On the night in question, uh, did you have a body camera? Yes, sir. At any time, were you able to record the encounter between you and Erica? Yes, sir. So now I want to ask you these series of questions regarding the recordings. Yes. Uh, were you aware of the of the gas station, the stripes or circle K as you call it, it having surveillance cameras as well? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you have an opportunity after this incident to review the video footage of the store? No, sir. Or did you have the opportunity to view the video footage from your body camera? From my body camera, uh, yes, sir. Okay. Opportunity to view the contents on this CD. The, uh, yes, sir. Okay, and you're familiar with it because you were operating the body camera. Body camera and and it, it says there body camera. Eric Yes. Sir. That body camera video was preserved. Yes, sir. Okay, and, and was submitted and and uh, and um, and uh, kept. Yes, sir. Okay. DPS Trooper Hernandez, right? Yes, sir. Sir, my name is Juan Perez, and I represent Mr. Ortiz. Now, here we have a, a DVD, March States Exhibit Number 13, that you've identified, correct? Yes, sir. And I know it's a copy, apparently, of this body cam thing, but this particular exhibit, this one, have you inserted into a, a DVD player and viewed it before testifying here today? 
that one in particular, no. Okay, I qualify. I submit that he's not qualified, and it's not admissible at this point in time, Your Honor. Yeah, we don't know what's on this one, Your Honor, from from his personal knowledge, Max's personal knowledge on this exhibit. Your Honor, my response, uh, if I can continue my line of questioning. Uh, well, with, Your Honor, as for that, we'd ask that. Well, you want to approach? Yes, sir, Judge, if we can. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take up a legal matter, so I'm going to excuse you for a few minutes and uh, just remind you not to discuss the facts of the case. Mr. Medina? All right, to the jury. Mr. Pettis? Is this one of these monitor? Uh, Lenise, you want to continue with the questioning of the witness uh, on that Exhibit 13? Yeah, I'm just going to put it yeah. up. Yeah. I mean, just watch this. Yeah. 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 Should I just play it from here, Your Honor? No, we, yes, we're going to go ahead and, uh, Cooper, not this, we're going to play the videos from that night, and uh, we'd like for you to authenticate, if you will, uh, if these, in fact, are the same videos that was on your person and if the video from the store is the store that you were at. Yep. And if the person at the store is you being recorded. Yep. He comes out in the recording at the store, and, Your Honor. And, and for the record, you need to ask that. Mm -hmm. The exhibit that you're referring to is? Right now, we will be referring to uh, State's Exhibit 13, 13 yep. which is his body cam video. Yes. Now, we will also show him states exhibit 14 which is the video from the store in which he is recorded at the store all right do you see it on your screen trooper yes sir <coughs> Gracias.
Ponte aquí nomás, deja de hablarle. Ok, nomás ponte de este lado, please. Deja. Es que tengo que agarrar algo de ahí. Ponte aquí nomás, real quick. Ahorita, ahorita te ayudo, just tranquila. Ponte aquí, mira. Let me just get something sí, from no you. Okay. No, no, lo voy a ver, no lo estoy viendo. ¿Y dónde está el muchacho? Trae una troca blanca. ¿Ya se fue? Sí. Ay, me asusté bastante, sí. Okay, just. Uh, just hold on, okay? ¿Quieres, uh, ¿Quieres hacer un report? Tengo miedo que me vaya a ver, me quiero sentar. Hey, Eddie, this is Lunes 315. Hey, can you send PD to my 20? I'm right here at the Circle K on uh, McPherson and in uh, Loop 20. It's in reference to uh, an assault uh, on a female. You, you know which one right the Valero right here at the um, intersection of uh, Loop 20 and, Mc, and uh, McPherson, like going towards the Border Patrol station? Okay, let me. Yeah, I'm waiting here with the female. All right, thanks. Tengo miedo, no puedo sentar ahí, señor. Espérate. Oye, entonces, nomás tengo que saber algo. Entonces, ¿tú te subiste a la troca de un muchacho? Yo subí, sí. Él ofreció comprarme cigarros y compró unas beers. Y dijo, ¿vas a dar la vuelta conmigo? Y yo le dije que sí, señor. Nomás que yo nunca me voy lejos. So I know desde que, de que él estaba manejando muy para acá. Y le dije... ¿Y dónde estaba el muchacho? ¿Este es ahí? Ahí donde está la troca es esta y el carro. Ahí está el trailer. Ay, eso me quedó sentado. So, so, cuando yo estaba aquí, ¿estabas adentro de la troca? Sí. Me vine corriendo, me quería, me sacó la pistola y me quería subir y me empecé a gritar. Help me, help me. So, cuando te bajaste de la troca, ¿gritates? Sí, eso. Ok. ¿Y no te acuerdas? Uh... Hay una Dodge Blanca, vive por aquí. ¿Sabes dónde vive? Sí, sí. Si me llevo ahorita, más o menos, si sí puedo dar, sir. ¿Y por qué, por qué te subiste con él? ¿No? ¿Por qué ibas a ir a...? ¿Por qué? Porque me dijo este, que si quería unos cigarros. Ajá. Y yo le dije que sí y él nomás me dijo, ven a dar la vuelta conmigo un rato y te llevo. ¿Esa Dodge Ram que está aquí no es esa? A ver, sí. No. ¿Esa no es? Ay, yo traía una pistola, nomás que... ¿Estás seguro que no está, tal vez, estando por ahí? Tal vez a lo mejor está la vuelta. Una troca blanca, sí. Mire. Y luego, I started getting very sick, sir. Uh -huh. I started getting very sick. Y este, dijo, le digo yo a él, maybe it's because I've been eating all day. Yeah. Y este, um, dijo, do you want a burger? Y le digo yo, yo quería que él manejara para allá, para allá por la San Bernardo. Uh -huh. Y le digo yo, Sí, pero dale para allá, este, para allá por mi barrio. Dijo, I'm going to stop Brooke aquí. They saw this really good So burgers. you know who he is? His name is David. You only know him as David or? Yeah. It's your man. Yeah, sir. Just relax. No, 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 Well, no, don't worry about it. You're in good. You're in, you're safe right now. Tam yeah, but you're safe right now. Está bien. Don't worry. Um, ahorita, mira. We're relaxed. Just relax. Um, we were talking about the little muchachas que acaba de fallecer. Uh huh. And he got very nervous. He got very nervous, and um, he started acting weird. And my stomach started to hurt. Literally, I vomit. Y le digo yo, are you okay? And he's like, um, yeah, I'm okay. And then he, all of a sudden, he's like, just ponte aquí just así. Y luego all of a sudden, me dice, dice, I feel weird. He said, I feel very stressed. Pero te asaltó, ¿ver? Cuando te quitó la camisa. Cuando me quitó la camisa. Yo me zafé de la camisa para salirme. Por so he was trabajo. trying to grab you? He was trying to grab me y subirme para la tropa que para subirme. Con una cola me sacó, dijo, güey, se partió allá en un ladito. Espérate, nomás siéntate así, nomás, se dice que Y me dice, este, porque he knew that I didn't want to go far. Yeah. Y luego, 
So, ¿por qué no viniste? Um, cuando viniste, ¿por qué no me dijiste? Se acaba de ir un muchacho o algo. No, porque vengo corriendo desde allá. So, él estaba en la calle. Él estaba en la troca. Pero, manejando. sí, no, yo sé, pero ¿dónde estaba la, la, la troca? ¿En la calle o aquí en, en el parque? En la calle. Ah, ok. En la calle, sir. Y yo le dije, el señor tiene una blusa. Y luego el señor dice, este, allá está la policía, ve. So, I'm very scared. Don't worry, you're, you're, I'm you're. Afraid, so, conoce tu familia o qué? No sabe dónde vivo. And how does he, how, so you knew this guy before? Yes, I, mire, el vato anda en la zambe. Uh -huh. Y varias veces me ha levantado. Uh -huh. ¿Verdad? Y me ha dado dinero. No más que yo no lo había visto. Ok. Hay una troca blanca. Yo no lo había visto y hace ratito lo vi. Ok. Y él me dijo, ¿quieres unos cigarros y una piel? Acompáñame a vuelta, pero él empezó a manejar para acá y para acá y yo no me dio miedo yo le dije que yo no vengo hasta acá so, okay. so este he knew that I wanted to get off y él me dice este, déjame llevarte aquí para comprarte un lunch y te llevo para atrás y te dejo uh -huh. and um, este, me dice déjame comprarte un lunch y luego te llevo para atrás He said she's closer. Okay, what are you? Dodge Blanca. But don't worry, ahorita, um, We ahorita. We started talking about the los muchachos que acaban de fallecer. Las, las que las rompieron allá. Y dice la otra. Okay. Sí, sí, sí. I don't have cigarettes, so I don't smoke. Black and mild, cigarettes are bad for you. No, no, cigarettes are bad for you right now. Me quiero tranquilizar, sir. Mira, just hold on, ahorita. Y luego le dije yo, este, préstame tu teléfono. Es que de repente me dio un feeling, sir, de que, de algo de él. Y mm. le digo yo, he noticed me that I got scared. Y le digo yo, préstame el teléfono para hablarle a mi mamá, para decirle que estoy bien. Y luego me dice, wait, I'll let you use the phone right now. And uh, nunca me quiso prestar el teléfono. Ya nos subimos a la troca y este, le digo, préstame el teléfono y ya me lo quiso prestar, sir. Oh, don't worry, mira, He ahorita. started cruising, que quería que viniera con él a dar la vuelta, a comprar unos cigarros y una cerveza. Y pasó por su casa, vive por aquí, no sé muy bien, yo no sé qué es, C-H-A-O-S, algo así, sand, algo por ahí, sir. Ok. Bueno, well, mira, voy a hablar a Piri para que Piri me ayudara aquí, ¿ok? Que Piri tiene más resources aquí para poder ir a buscar al muchacho y and, and pues le help you out, ¿ok? So, ahorita nomás se llega Piri. Well, I mean, sí, if you already have a description del muchacho, de la sí, troca, bueno, más o menos dónde va, bueno, then it shouldn't be. Trabaja, ok. Pero no sé pues que I'm saying. Traía una long page shirt, botas. You just got a weird feeling this time. Yes, sir, I even started to vomit. I even started to vomit, sir. Está bueno, pues, let me... Let me just check something out. I don't have any of them. Sir, I said when I me sacó the pistola, sir, que yo abrí la puerta, he wanted me to get in, y que me quedara callada. Sí, gracias a Dios. Wait, did you copy this? Did you, or what's the status on PD? Let me know. All right. Oh, bueno, don't worry. Ya deben de llegar ahorita. So, ya con eso, pues el description que me diste y el dis. Well, then you gotta do something before he does. You know, post reporting. Okay, and that's good. That's why ahorita Balvini PD, we're gonna do a police report, and and you have the description that muchacho y todo. Just relax, so. Just relax. Take deep breaths, so. Take deep breaths. Just take deep, deep breaths, so. Okay. Just take deep breaths. Uh huh. Take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath. Él quería me ofreció dinero. He offered money. Okay. 
y de primero yo le dije que sí. Okay. Pero, when we went in his house, y llegó a su casa, yeah. I started, my body, I started feeling very sick, I started shaking, me dio yeah. miedo, okay. miedo me dio, so yo invento, le digo, vamos para la troca porque se me quedó algo ahí, uh -huh. y ya que nos salimos, le digo yo, ya no voy a entrar, yo no puedo entrar, me empecé a sentir bien mal ahí adentro, so está bueno, agarró las llaves, la wallet, nos subimos, y este, fue cuando empezó a manejar para acá, pero ay, gracias a Dios que no me quedo ni Okay. Algo me fuera pasado. Yo vi en su mirada, yo cuando quise, como cuando, cuando sabes que alguien mata todo, ay. Este, yeah. sí. Sí. Oye, ¿Tienes aquí golpes o qué? No, es que no me. Vio ya para ahorita, ya vio que estoy aquí. Está bueno, no te preocupes, estás seguro conmigo. Sí, ya está bien, ya vio. Estás seguro conmigo, no te preocupes. Pero por eso vas a hacer un policía de policía, ¿me entiendes? Estás seguro conmigo, ¿me entiendes? Aquí no te apures. We're just trying to see maybe he's circling around or algo como dices tú. And I'm watching, I'm watching. Una troca blanca, una dodge, una troca blanca. Este, las ventanas no están tan oscuras. Yeah. So I'm keeping an eye, no te preocupes. Let's just wait for PD real quick, okay? Así para que le... Just relax. Ya te sientes mejor? A little bit. Estaba muy... Just keep taking deep breaths. Él me quería llevar para allá. Más que yo no. Oh. Ok. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. No está bien. You don't, you don't need an ambulance? The ambulance, no, you're okay. No más ese, el susto que te sacó la pistola and, and that you might be fearing for your life. Okay. Okay, hold on. Hello? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, no worries, no worries. Don't do some baby's part. I can stand by here. Okay, uh, hold on. ¿Cómo te llamas? Erica. Erica, ¿qué? Salma Peña. Salma Peña? Salma. A ver, let me give you the 27 minutes. Hold on. Erica Peña. Erica Peña? Is your date of birth? 11-23-91. Erica Peña, 11-23-91. Erica Peña. No, no, no. She doesn't need any medical help. She just wants to call an assault report. Okay. Down the road. Let's see what PD is going to want. Okay. Is that a, is that a PD? Down. Down the road. We'll check right now. I'll let you know how I think. Ahorita viene PD, they just, I gotta advise them when they get here. Just relax, so relax. You gotta take a deep breath. Ahorita, just wait. I can't go, tengo, tiene, tiene que ir PD primero, then I'll, I'll get you something. Sí. Pero tiene que venir PD primero, okay? No well, let's just take that first, okay? Let's just take that first step, okay? You're, you're a cigarette smoker, okay? Yes. A lot? I smoke. How much? How, mu how much do you smoke? I smoke a lot. During the day, cuánto? Okay, we'll just hold on. All right, don't worry. But you're okay, with that? Yes. Okay. No más el susto. So basically, he's like a friend of yours. He's not a real friend, sir. I've seen him four or five times. I'm not gonna lie. Four or five times, he me daba dinero. Le 
verdad, pero yo no lo había visto. Yo no lo había visto, sino que hoy en la tarde lo vi. Y este... Pues, he knew Melissa, right? The girl they killed Melissa Ramirez, and we started talking about her. What happened? And he got very weird all of a sudden, very mm -hmm. nervous. He did? Okay. I don't know, sir. I got a vibe. A bad vibe? A vibe. And um, so that's when the problem started out loud. That's when he got really like, did he get angry? He got like nervous and scared. Okay. And then he goes, Yo, are you okay? Are you okay? And he said, Yeah. And he said, But let's talk about you. And he said, Why did you get? And he said, Why did? Why did you um, all of a sudden got scared? Why are you scared of me? And he started getting scared. ¿Te sabes su nombre completo o nomás el nombre? Que, el David. Tiene una casa por aquí. Tiene una casa por aquí. That's where he was going. Yeah. Does he live by himself? Este, es, es una big, it's a big house, sir. Um, I know he just got separated. And la casa estaba sola. Um, y pues está solo, sir. Okay. He's alone. He's He's alone. alone. But so you, you say you wanted to go in his room? He wanted me to, he wanted to take me. Oh, I see what you mean. Él me quería llevar. Yeah, 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 I understand. Y yo no quise. Fue cuando yo le dije, le dejé algo en la troca. Vamos. Okay. And um, me quería llevar más para allá. Si uno se iba a parquear aquí a comprar un burger, me dice, hold on. Y saca la pistola. What color was the gun? Black? Gray? Black? So I black. Okay. ¿Si te la apuntó o, o no? Sí. ¿Si te la apuntó? Si me la apuntó así, sí. Okay. Aquí. Ojos de color. Las botas son café. Traía unos pantalones así como este color, un poquito claritos. Y traía una camisa este beige de manga larga. All right. Y andaba solo, no andaba con alguien más. Él andaba solo. Él andaba solo, sí. Y luego este. Empezó a decir que, que he was scared, que porque um, he was one of the guys that saw Melissa last. Really? And I don't know what. Y le sucedió sin blusa. ¿Y el muchacho este sabe dónde trabaja? No. ¿Y no? No sé exactamente dónde. Pues es que está usando boots y like, se ve como un oil field worker. Como, um, I think he said he was a supervisor somewhere. Like in the oil field, or something? Okay. 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 No, no, don't worry. Ahorita, ahorita viene alguien. Don't worry, okay? I believe you. I believe you. I do. I do believe you. That's why I'm offering you, like, to help you y at the same time, pues si no necesitas ayuda, um, let's see what PD might help us out and maybe ir a buscarlo, you know, go look for him right now, or, or maybe if you already know him, they can give you pictures of him, you know? So, don't worry, I mean, I assure you que, que you're in good hands. Ahorita, no te asustes, ahorita, if he's circling around or whatever, you're, you're here with me, okay? That's, that's what I'm looking for. I see no way I pass another Dodge, another Dodge uh, Ram or something like that. You know it was a Dodge. Okay. Más para 
You feel a little bit more relaxed, yeah? I know, just just hold on though. No más espérate. Just hold on. Ten cuidado, es que tengo. No, 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 no. Es... ¿Tienes una amiga? ¿Y con la amiga la hablas? Like if he was on something? No. No, 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 sé, no, 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 este, no, they were looking and I was shaking and was so hard now. And he was like, he was like, no, it's a little bit weird. And this was the same. Okay. No, don't worry. I'll, I'm keeping an eye. Don't worry. You're safe here. This is not Ford. You say Dodge, right? Let's get a Dodge. Oh, bueno, no, y ahorita que venga Piri, Piri might go take sí, you there, ¿me entiendes? Estoy bien, bien pendeja para ti. Pero sabes cómo llegar. Pero más o menos, tengo que concentrarme. Sí. Ok. Toque mi corazón, señor. No te preocupes. Touch my heart, what you think I'm just doing. No, I believe you, I, I totally believe you. I, I know you're just going through a shock right now, donde, donde acabas de salir de un, de un escape, you know what I mean? You basically escape from a situation where it would, could be dangerous. Pero esa no es, esa es una no, SUV. No, tiene las, algo así, algo así, okay. no, como nueva, no necesita, pero no tiene las ventanas tan oscuras. ¿Son 4-door? Ya. Yeah. No te preocupes. Todavía tienes miedo. Bastante miedo. Bueno, no, I'm keeping an eye de, de eso. Ok. Pero ahora sabes que no puedes ir en su vehículo ni siquiera. ¿Me entiendes? Aprendes, I mean, you, you, I mean, you know, no sé, 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 no es de confiar en mucha gente, especialmente si no lo conoces tan bien. Sí. I mean, you say que he hit this four times, maybe. Cuatro o cinco veces. Y siempre me buscaba, sir, pero yo lo tiraba a León. Sí. Yeah. Yo lo tiraba a León. Y este. Yo sabía que. Que he would pick up Melissa también. Really? Melissa Ramírez. La primera. La sí. Yo sab, este. Yo sabía que él la levantaba porque él me platicaba de ella y cuando yo la miraba ella también de él, ¿verdad? ¿No has visto al de la troca blanca? Porque me alivia la feria y yo no, no más que yo lo tiraba a León porque era como bien necio. Ok. Y no más que no lo había visto en dos semanas y me vio y me dijo, ¿quieres unos cigarros y una cerveza? Y yo le dije que sí y me subí. Yeah. Este, bueno, vamos a dar la vuelta un ratito. Bueno, está bueno, le digo, pero no muy lejos, le digo, porque yo no me voy muy lejos. Este, no más que se diga. ¿Y Melissa no era tu amiga? No. ¿No la conocías? Yo la miraba, yo la miraba. Y este, pues nomás la conocí en el condado y eh, así en la calle, pero hasta ahí. 
Y la segunda muchacha, esa no la conocías. Te vista nomás también. también. Pues maybe, I mean, así como estás cooperando conmigo, coopera con el oficial este que venga. And I'm pretty sure they can help you out en esa manera para poder traer un a, una solve report at least, you know, con, con él. And maybe you can break a case de lo que está pasando ahorita. Sí. You know what I mean? Yeah. You never know. You never know. Sí. I mean, ellas ya no pueden hablar por ellas, you know sí. what I mean? Sí. You know? Ay, gracias a Dios que me bajé la tropa. Well, if you think about it, estas murders han pasado en las noches. Yeah. Ay, voy ahorita nomás, deja que venga la policía, eh. deja que venga, es que no te puedo dejar sola, I mean, especially si es que anda, o he might be around here o algo, ¿no? yeah. a lo mejor va a pensar que nada, ahorita dice algo, el policía lo ignora y te vas caminando otra vez, you know, like, I don't want him to think that way, you know. I don't have any, though. I really don't. That's why I think you had to sit there so that people could see you. Esta es la que se metió primero. Ese, a ver, no. No, es... no, ese era el muchacho que caminó ahorita para allá en mi camisa gris. Talking right, he let me go. I heard that um, they're picking, they're picking people up to investigate, right? Mm -hmm. um, the girls and he's like, well, what are the girls saying? Um, what have you heard? And I'm like, I don't know. I literally empecé a temblar que la tuve que despistar de cómo empecé a temblar. Wow. <clears throat> en serio, sir. I believe you. No, I'm I totally believe you. La tuve que despistar, sir. Cuando empecé yo así de Like if there was nothing wrong, para que no mirara. Que él me vio, ir eso. Que él me vio cuando yo... Me toca, si no será ese que vaya arriba, se toca blanca. I don't know. But no, don't worry. I mean, I thought that's, that's, you're safe.
oiga nervous cuando le comenzaste a mencionar a las muchachas you think he's capable of doing something like that I mean carrying a gun me sacó la pistola estoy diciendo que me la sacó sir de repente se partió aquí don't worry I mean I'm, I'm keeping an eye de repente se partió allá atrás del trailer esa troca no esta no, ¿verdad? Que va aquí. De repente se parqueó atrás del trailer, ¿verdad? Yeah. Este, que supuestamente he was going to go into here, pero dice, dice, do you want drive through o quieres walking? Y le digo yo, drive through. Dice, wait, well, hold on, because I have to uh, get in by the sidewalk. So, él se parquea, sir, atrás del trailer. Yeah. Y dice, wait, wait a minute. Saca y abro la puerta y me agarra él. Yeah. Y yo empiezo a gritar y quiero este, alcanzar a Chris para que oiga la gente que estoy pitando. Pero me sacó de la shirt. He grabbed the hole of your shirt o, yeah. o te quiso agarrar completamente. Me quiso agarrar completamente. Yeah, en de tus zapatos de la camisa. De la Just relax. Y le digo al muchacho ese cuando empecé a cuando empecé a, a caminar over here estaba uh -huh. yo sin shirt y le digo una camisa era o algo para taparme y dice y dice ya está el policía uno de los de aquí te dijo el que está allá sí sí está allá un señor okay. I know, it's just, I can't go by myself. Just hold on, just relax. Just, just relax. Yeah, just take deep breath, slowly, in and out, just slowly. Por mientras. I know, you're, pues it's a shock. I mean, you just escaped from a from a possible kidnap, you know? I mean, te fuera hecho kidnap, and that would have been the end of you. The gun you said was, it was black or white? It was black. Gordita. I didn't think really nothing porque yo lo había visto como four or five times. Yeah. Pero when we went in his house, right, we went in for like five minutes. Este, porque no digo que me ofreció dinero. We went in for like five minutes, pero I got scared. This is the que. All right, just hold on, okay? Give me a second, my friend, okay? Please. Hey, hello? Hey, um... Es que tengo una girl que she escaped from a from a girl from a guy that uh, pointed a gun at her here at McPherson in Loop 20 and she's one of those one of those girls you know what I mean and uh, the guy pointed a gun and he se le, se le escapó a la persona and she's without a shirt basically right now and I called PD to come over here and assist but they haven't shown up though so but she knows that guy's name like the first name and where he lives though. Sam, well, just the first name, David, and um, yeah. Que más o menos vive por aquí. Y vive por una casa que se llama, ¿cómo se llama la calle? No, 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 nomás dime qué calle es. Es aquí como por San Isidro. Por San Isidro, it's a big house, por Sand Hill or something like that, right? Es una calle, más o menos Sand. Sand Hill, I think that's what it is. I'm right here in McPherson, in uh, Loop 20, right here at the, uh, the, uh, the Circle K in Valero. Yendo pa, pa Border Patrol. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, she's gone. She's gone to the house before. She's without a shirt. I took off my shirt. She's without a shirt right now because she escaped from him. One yendo pa Border Patrol headquarters on McPherson, that corner one. By in, oh, yeah, International and Loop 20. No, no, no. I'm sorry, McPherson and Loop 20. McPherson Loop 20. Yeah, but well, and it's not the Exxon. It's the uh, Circle K. 
Loop 20 and McPherson. Yeah, the one that's like when you go towards Border Patrol. Yeah, she she's in shock, man. Like, yeah, yeah. And 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 um, she was trying to mention something about the other two girls, and that's when the guy got nervous, and I guess. She know she knows well she doesn't know but she knows who they are, some muchachas. Uh yeah, you want me to take over there? I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, we're at the, the same station right there at the web county. Wait, do you, do you do you have an extra shirt though? Well, can you get an extra shirt? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna, we're gonna go get a shirt, and then that way they can talk to you. All right. Mira, um, this is what's gonna happen. Uno de los oficiales de nosotros va a hablar contigo. Okay. Just the same situation que me dijiste. So all this. Okay. Um, I told them to get you a shirt. Yeah. Para que, para que puedas hablar comfortable con ellos. Okay. And um, so we're gonna go to the station. And we're going to talk to you regarding your situation right now, most importantly. Yeah. Y luego también regarding maybe the guy's name, más o menos donde vive todo eso, okay? So basically, um, we're going to help you out, ¿me entiendes? So, mira, no te voy a decir que te vengas acá atrás. Si quieres, te puedes ir enfrente. Back in my channel. Um, let me tell him. Yeah, let me tell him. A black and mild. Okay, ya le dije. So mira, um, you know the woman had yo todavía, but we're gonna go over there and we're gonna try to get some other units. Okay. okay. Let's go over there first and we'll take it there first step by step. Just but si te digo que te vayas en frente. No, no, vente por acá, mira. Just cierra la puerta de hola. Just come this way. Just relax, es que tengo unas cosas, déjame sacarlas de volar. No, no. Don't worry. No, 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 don't worry, you're with me. You're with me, just relax, okay? Just relax. There you go. Yeah, you're good. Let's go. 3215 there. Oh, um, we'll be en route to Web County with that female. Um, the SO. Yeah. Park All right over there. In that street. Uh, sorry, Judge. So the the rest of the video, Your Honor, um, although it's it's one continuous video, we do believe that the rest at that point is hearsay. So from when he gets into the car, so that part we'd like to keep the audio out. But uh, if I could have some follow up questions with Trooper Hernandez just to verify the rest of the video. Uh, Trooper Hernandez, did you did you view the video that we just saw right now? Yes, sir. And uh, did you recognize yourself in that video? Yes, sir. Did you recognize your voice in that video? Yes, sir. Is what you saw here today a true and accurate depiction of what happened that day? Yes, sir. Your Honor, at this time we'd like to re-urge uh, the submission of State's Exhibit 13, 13 Your Honor. Uh, Judge, uh, while some of this may indeed be an excited utterance, the point at which the trooper begins asking questions of the uh, declarant of the excited utterance, it ceases being an excited utterance and now becomes a question and answer session between the trooper and the declarant. So the, I, well, I, I guess I, we would concede the original part where she comes up and there's no questions asked of her. And I, and I don't mean uh, open-ended questions. 
like uh, the trooper, I can't remember exactly, but he may say, what happened? Well, that's open-ended. That, that certainly doesn't make it cease to be. But when he starts talking in here about, okay, uh, was the truck on the street or in the parking lot? Was the, uh, the truck is white? When that question becomes specific, it becomes hearsay. Because now it is not opening questions. You're saying, okay, what happened? Where is it? What, like that. Where there's any kind of answer. But when the answers become specific to specific questions, it is no longer an excited utterance because the questions aren't open. Would I notice that she was repeating things on her own, blurting things out again, re repeatedly saying the person's name, repeat, repeatedly saying that it was a white truck, and that uh, repeating the, the description of the incident. And then I think towards the tail end when the trooper was on the phone, he still described her as being in shock. Uh, and this was way after some of those maybe pointed questions that you're saying, but but even to that, I think it was still from what I from what I was seeing and hearing, it was repeating the same thing over and over. I don't think there was anything new that was said afterwards. I think he was reaffirming it was a like, what, give, me, give me give me information because it's a very general. Okay, so I, I, what I, what exactly are you saying should be kept out? So I well, what, I didn't make an exact time mark. But somewhere after about six or seven minutes, it's like you say. So, for, what information are you saying specifically? Well, uh, when, when they and, start. And let, me, let me let me before you answer that. I understood there may be a, a, a translation that that's going to be offered. Yeah. Is that accurate? Yes, your honor. So my coordinators mentioned because a lot of it's in Spanish. We right. don't have an interpreter. So. And, and due to that, your honor, we did we actually okay. filed it. It is certified by Mr. Oh, Delante. Oh, okay, so I just wanted to clarify yes, that point because I, I I know we don't have an interpreter and. I, I, I asked my coordinator, he said that you all had yes. a translation that you're going to offer. Kind of like, what specific information are you objecting to, Mr. Fuchs? Your Honor, if I may, this is an analogous to a 911 call. And it's an ongoing emergency. It, she had just escaped a possible kidnapping, an aggravated assault. He's asking basic questions that uh, further the investigation. Um, none of it's being offered for the truth of the matter asserted. If anything, it's an excited utterance and uh, it's an ongoing well, and investigation. Let me, and let me, I guess, just before I make my ruling, uh, again, part of what I observed in the video, Mr. Fuchs, Mr. Perez, is the officer asking questions about the description of the vehicle because he looks like he's on the lookout and, and, and let the earth reflect it. I'm turning around left and right. He's looking to the right side of his vehicle, to the left side of his vehicle. He's asking, there's there's trucks passing by, and he's asking her, is that the vehicle? Is that the vehicle? I mean, observing the surroundings. And so I think it's all still part of the same. It's not part of her excited utterance, Judge. And so once he starts questioning like that, the excited utterance has ended. Just because a person continues to scream. Well, the excited utterance ends when the person stops being excited about it. If she's still, she, uh, if, she, uh, if she's uh, apparently the heroin hadn't taken effect. I, I'm just saying, to you, just because she's shaking and excited doesn't mean it's still an excited utterance. I mean, at some point, I mean, I guess then the statement she made down at the uh, sheriff's office that's going to come in too as an excited utterance, and she's sitting down there and they're, they're asking they're her questions. Once the police start asking those questions. But tell me what point again. I know you're looking at well, the well, what, uh, uh, what are the questions so I can go back to that point? Time. We, we, only, we just got this, Judge. We didn't have it. That's what the translation? This translation, right? We didn't have it. No, it's been on file, Your Honor, and, and, and with all due respect well, to, to Mr. Fook, uh, under Bochamp v. State, there is no per se rule for determining whether too much time has passed between the making of the statement and the occurrence of the events or conditions which precipitated the comment. A functional test should be applied, namely whether the proximity and time is sufficient to reduce the hearsay dangers, a faulty memory, and sincerity. She's in shock the entire time, Your Honor. Every statement she made is admissible as an exception to hearsay. Yes, sir. Not if it's subject to questioning. I, I mean, I understand an excited utterance can be made two days later if the person is still under the, the, the throes, uh, emotional throes of the event. But once it turns into police questioning and answering, it's no longer an excited utterance. It, it's okay. I'll, I'll let you keep. Listening. It's a response to questioning. I understand. It, it's not, you know. So the original part of this, I'd agree. But but I think when he starts even just asking her, 
Okay, what's your name? What's your date of birth? He has not interrupted this excited utterance to the degree that it is now question and answer session, even though she's still excited. But she's answering those specific questions. There are no longer open-ended questions. And, and so in that regard, I, I guess, uh, I think there's some time stamps on here somewhere. It, it would be like in, in uh, page, uh, uh, I don't know what page is in this translation. You know, it, well, even back here on, on the tenth page of this translation where he's telling her, uh, uh, if you already have a description, you know, uh, the pickup truck, and we do this, we can do that. Now he's going into question and answers. And, and to me, that's it, the end of the excited utterance. I'm not disagreeing with the first part of it, where she comes up and just starts uh, uh, stating things. I, I would concede that's an excited utterance. But at the point where he starts questioning her, that, that, that's where it ends. You know, uh, like she's, he's saying, okay, you just got a weird feeling this time. Well, that, that's a question she's going to say yes or no. It's not going to be, I had a weird feeling. It's not a, an excited utterance anymore. And it's a response to his questioning. And that is on page 11. And we would then say that's where we then object to what's, whatever's thereafter. I don't have time stamps on this. But it's page 11 of, of what y'all mark that at? State's Exhibit. Uh, 14. 14. 14. Uh, State's Exhibit 14. It, it, does the court have a copy of it? No, we haven't introduced it yet. Well, it'd be it's, okay it's with those two seasons. It's on file. No, no, it'd be okay. With, well, the judge doesn't have it in front of him. I just wish he would. Your Honor, again, this is also an exception to the present sense impression as well. Uh, this is analogous to a 911 call, same format. The excitement and shock continues all the way to the very end to the, when the trooper's on the phone and says she's on shock. You could see it with our, with our just on the video. Her hands are shaking. Uh, she's even crying towards the end. You can't see her, but you hear her crying that this has never happened to her before. Uh, again, under present sense suppression, excited utterance, arguably even the entire ride to the station could come in. We're cutting it off when he gets into the vehicle with her at that point. I doubt it's present sense impression. Present sense impression is, hey, there's the white Dodge going right in front of me. It's present. Everything she's describing is past. It's not present sense impression at all. <coughs> All right. Uh, objection to hearsay is overruled. Um, the court will admit uh, state's exhibit 13 is the one you're offering. You're offering 14 at this time as well? Yes, sir. We're offering 14. And, and the state's exhibit 14, I, I will. Uh, offering it for what purpose? We don't want the jury to have that. He, if he's going to play the video, they don't get that. Your Honor. Well, this is a translation. I understand. So why don't they get the translation? Well, I. You want to, I mean, it's in Spanish, some of the language, right? So well, I understand, but that's, that's you know, it's the, that's the life. You know, now we got to, okay, I'm just, I'm, I'd object to that being... Well, well Your Honor, I think the way we've done it is, if I may, is this thing on? Yeah, it's on. Yes. Well, there's no jury anyway. Um. Well, specifically on, on Exhibit 13, the court's <laughs> admitting it first. One second. 13, it's being admitted, that's the video. That's the video. I'm, I'm over your objection. Court finds that uh, it was an excited utterance uh, statement throughout, uh, up until the point that it was paused. Now on Exhibit 14. Okay, on 14, when they're saying they're offering it as an exhibit, to us, number one, it's hearsay, and it violates the best evidence rule. The best evidence is the DVD itself. Now, to assist the jurors, what you might do is they may make copies as, as, the, as the DVD is playing. They can use it. To go along and read, and then that's it. We get it back. Okay. Do you have copies? We have a copy. We have copies for the jurors. That's, that's what he's asking. Not well, to, no, yeah, we have he's saying not to offer it as an exhibit, but to allow the jury to read it. Not a problem. 
while they watch it. As long as they can have it and read it, it's certified, it's translated. Yeah, and if you yeah. can just instruct them, something they say, Your Honor, you can instruct them, hey, we're offering you this to review, but then we're going to get it back. You know, and, you need, and we would not object to remaining an exhibit so it's there, but they are informed, you don't take it back with you. So this will be an exhibit just for, it's to give it in the file? Exhibit. A court exhibit. No court objections, exhibit. Your Honor. All right, so will it make state's exhibit number 14 as a court exhibit, not to be furnished to the jury other than during the time that they're watching the video, not to be furnished to them when they deliberate or otherwise? Your Honor, we also have exhibits uh, 15, 16, and 17, which is the video footage from the from the circle cage, just a few snippets that for the seconds that the trooper is, is there where he can... Uh, testify that that's the location he was at at the time he was at and it displays him being there and the approach from the store video looking at at the scene the only thing we would ask is to have them question him now so he can authenticate that that is an unedited copy of the uh, video from that circle k how it was created you know under edwards that the way the, the recording was made if he can testify to that to authenticate it I don't believe he can. Your Honor, that's only one part of authentication when it comes to a video. If he can identify himself or the scenario in the video as being accurate, that in itself will authenticate the video. It doesn't have to be the person that records it or the person that burns the video, as long as he's somebody that can identify himself within it. In 15, 16, and 17, they're short. They're so snippets. They're do. basically the clips so from Go ahead and play them, and then I'll make a ruling after. So you can also then verify that it's unedited. Is that correct? Well, it's just, no, it's, it's unedited per, as per. Uh, it, yeah, it, it shows just the moment that this happens. That's what it shows, and it's unedited. And you can, we can, more dire the trooper on it. Sorry. Okay. All right. Go ahead and uh, show the witness your your additional exhibits. Exhibit 15 at this time. He's not here, but I'm sorry. I figured. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yes, ma'am, it's green. I'm not talking about the light. I'm talking about the little light. Yes, it's on. It's on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So as this is playing, Your Honor, uh, I'm going to ask Trooper Hernandez, um, what you're what you're seeing in the video there, is that um, a true and accurate depiction of what happened September 14th of 2018? And is that Exhibit 15 for the record? That's Exhibit 15, Your Honor. I can't see very well on this one though, because this is kind of like dark. I think back here. Oh.
So we may withdraw this one. Um, I'm going to play State's Exhibit 16. Can you, uh, can you identify yourself coming in, in this gas station? Yes, sir. That's me. Is that you parking in this video, the State's Exhibit 16? Yes, sir. That's a fair and accurate depiction of what happened on September, the night of September 14, 2018? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you want permission to play the other one, State's Exhibit 17? Is that the extent of this? It's, it's a short clip. With the, actually, uh, right now we'll see where Erica comes out, but as for the authentication, Your Honor, um, we'd, like to, we'd like to admit it to State's Exhibit 16 at this point, unless there's any objections. Any objections to 16 at this point? Can you identify the person that approached you in that video? Yes, sir. That's Eric up in Okay. Say we just do admit seats exhibit 16 at this time, Your Honor. We're okay with them. As far as them saying that this officer can testify, okay, this is me, that's me. We're still not waiving our objection that he can't authenticate that the recording equipment was working properly and, and the, right. the, the, the rest of the predicate. All right, so State's Exhibit 16 will be admitted. And your permission to place State's Exhibit 17 for the witness as well? You may. As long as you can see one of them. Okay. Trooper Hernandez, are you able to identify uh, where this is at in this video? Yes, sir. Uh, where is it's, that exactly? It's on the west side of the Circle K. Is that the same Circle K that we've been talking about uh, yes. today, September 14, 2018? Yes, sir. It's the same Circle K that corresponds to the other video that we saw, uh, States Exhibit 16. Yes, sir.
cryptocurrency school, uh, Hernandez, correct? Did you identify the person that just came on frame there? Yes, sir. And who was that? That was uh, Erika Peña. Okay. Um, Your Honor, this time the, the state wishes to introduce or into evidence state to 17 has been authenticated properly by the witness. predicate isn't being uh, this officer can testify to the recording equipment etc also on this one your honor this officer is not present and he cannot necessarily tell that this is the time or or the the this even the same parking lot you know I don't know if he's been into this back parking lot or not or the time for that matter so this one we think he can't properly authenticate especially because he's not present on the video your honor Okay, Your Honor, he doesn't have to actually come out in it or even speak in it as long as he can testify that what he's seeing there is actually what he observed. And it's contemporaneous to the other video, as we've seen before. He testified that, that was the other video from a different angle. And um, as the video shown, it's the same victim that's run in the same manner and wearing the, the exact same things. Um, so we do believe that this has been properly authenticated at this time, Your Honor. Well, well Your Honor, again, I, I don't think that he can say that. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but this is supposed to be a different part of this establishment, and I don't know. I think so your your objection is that he doesn't know or is not familiar with that location or that parking lot area. Or is that what your objection is? Or the, the time? I mean, if if he can say, "Hey, I saw that Mustang. I saw that guy shooting that camera," maybe he can. I don't know, but I don't think so. So you're also objecting to the time that's reflected on there as being, I guess, eight fifty nine at this point now, nine p.m. Well, well, with this lack of knowledge, Your Honor, yes. Especially since he's not familiar with this recording. If we're going to rely on time, that would be the reason to do that, to have him establish that predicate. And, and like I said, he's like the prosecutor said, oh, he, he, he knows that she ran through there. Well, what if she did somersaults coming this way? He, he wouldn't know. He didn't see her. Well, at this, they're offering it to show that the, the troopers identifying her as being there, wherever that is, I guess. Uh, he did t I did ask him earlier if he can identify where that is, and he uh, identified that it was the northwest or? The west side of the you're, And you're familiar with that based on what you're seeing there? Definitely, sir. Yeah. Right. What about the time issue? They're making an issue of the time. The correct, you know, that's the correct time. That's the same time that, yes, in, from your uh, yes, memory, that, that this occurred? Yes, sir. Your Honor, also, I'll also cite Stan Meyer versus State of Texas, 475 Southwest 2nd, 3rd. Oh. And that is the case law that addresses oh. these well, types uh, of issues. Objection overruled at this time. Uh, State Exhibit 17 will be admitted into evidence. All right. We're ready for the jury now? Yes. Go ahead and bring the jury back in. All right. Wait, 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 wait. One second, sir. <coughs> you go ahead, then. I'll give everyone a short recess. Uh, take a few minutes.
You may be seated for now. When you're Mr. Pettis. You may be seated. You may be seated for now. All right, are we ready for the jury now? Yes, we are. Yes. All right. Can the jury, please? You may be seated. And you may proceed. <coughs> uh, Trooper Hernandez, uh, we were discussing the videos that were taken uh, there at the Circle K on the night of the September the 14th of 2018, correct? Correct. Now, uh, you've had the opportunity to view the surveillance videos from the Circle K? Yes, sir. And you've been able to identify the location and the persons in that video, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, we also, you've been able to authenticate the State's Exhibit 13. Correct. And that is the video uh, from your body cam, correct? Correct. Okay. Your Honor, permission to publish uh, the videos uh, uh, from the Circle K, Exhibit 16, uh, first. Exhibit 16, yes, you may end for the record. Um, States exhibits 13, 16, and 17 have, have been admitted for the jury's consideration. You may, you may proceed. So I want you to look on the screen and, and uh, the video will begin playing. Okay, can you please walk us through this video and what we're viewing, the location? Yes, sir. Uh, so this is the gas station, uh, the Circle K, located at the intersection of Loop 20 and McPherson. Okay. And I'm putting up uh, right here to, I believe it's pump number five. Okay, if you can please speak into the mic. Please. I'm sorry. Okay. So this is the, I'm pulling up right here to the intersection of uh, McPherson Loop 20 at the Circle K, and I'm about to pump gas at, uh, I think it's pump number five, sir. Okay. What time is this going on? This is around, I would want to say it's uh, 8 ish somewhere around there. I'm not really sure about the time, sir. Close to 9 p.m.? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, there's a time stamp at the bottom of the video. Is that accurate? Can you see? Um, yes, sir. What yes. time does it show? It's uh, 8.52. P.M. P.M., yes, sir. And what is the date? It's 9.14.18. Uh, okay. September, so, September 14, September 14, 2018. Okay, is that yes, consistent? Sir. Yes, sir. It's accurate? Yes, sir. Okay. What's going on now? So as I'm... Standing around there at the pump number five, I see this lady, um, who at that time I didn't know her name, run up to me and uh, walk at a fast pace. And right there, I'm I'm trying to assess the situation of the condition she's at right there. Based on your training and your experience, what is your assessment of this person's demeanor? Based on my training experience, I see that she's scared. She's in shock. And I could say, say I can sense that, or not sense. I'm sorry. I could. I believe that something just happened um, that she's fearing for her life. Okay. Something uh, con contemporaneous. Something happened just right at yes. that moment. Yes. Okay. 
are now going to play States Exhibit 17 that's already been admitted. I'd like for you to identify the time and date on this video. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's uh, 9 14 2018, and the time is 49 30 32. 8 49. I'm sorry, 8 49. Yes, sir. Okay. Is that accurate with you, with you being there? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, where at, at the, where what location is the jury looking at here? So, this is um, the west side of the Circle K where I'm guessing up that's located at the intersection of Loop 20 and um, McPherson, sir. Are you familiar with this location, Trooper? Yes, sir. What do you see right now, Trooper? Uh, there's a lady running towards um, towards the, the, the Circle K. Uh -huh. um, awesome. Do you recognize the female in this image? Yes, yes, sir. And who is that? That's uh, Erica Peña, sir. Okay. Is she wearing the same uh, clothing at the moment that she approached you? Yes, sir. And the time coincides with the time that she approached you? Yes, sir. So now I'm going to shift back to the video that you took. Yes, sir. Right? Uh, tell us uh, when, when this person comes up to you in, in, a, in, a, in a crisis, correct? Correct, sir. She's in crisis. Uh, based on your training and your experience, what, do you, what actions do you take to, to preserve what's going on? So as I started talking to her and noticing her, her behavior, I noticed that she was... Um, in distress, um, she was hyperventilating. Uh, I, I believed her um, statement, and I started to give her safety, to tell her to uh, try to calm, calm her down, and uh, that she could trust me in, in confiding anything that had happened to her. Did you did you deploy any equipment that you needed at that time at the time at that moment? No, sir. Did you uh, are you equipped with body cam? Uh. Oh, yes, sir. So, um, in our body cam, the reason you cannot hear the first few seconds is because since it wasn't a traffic stop, it doesn't turn automatically. So, I had to activate the, the body cam. By That's what I'm trying to ask you. Did you at ever at oh, yes, time sir. deploy or, or activate any equipment yes, sir. to preserve the evidence? Of course, yes. Okay. And, and, and uh, that was your body cam? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Now you've been able to view the body cam here outside the presence of the jury, correct? Yes, sir. And that body cam footage is an accurate depiction of what took place that evening, correct? Yes, sir. And it shows everything, that what she told you, her demeanor, her emotions, and the excited utterances that she made. Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, permission to publish the State's Exhibit 13 and also to hand out the translations uh, for the video. Yes, sir. Let me just give some instructions on that. So, as I mentioned earlier, State's Exhibit 13 has been admitted. The uh, copies of the translation that the state is going to furnish for you to follow along because there's some Spanish uh, language spoken. You may you may use it in the courtroom while you follow along, but you may not take that into the jury room because it's not an exhibit. Okay. that all the jurors have uh, obtained a copy. Ponte aquí nomás, deja la ley. Ok, nomás ponte de este lado, please. Deja, es que tengo que agarrar algo de ahí. Ponte aquí nomás, real quick. Ahorita, ahorita te ayudo, just tranquila. Ponte aquí, mira. Let me just get something sí, from no you. Me okay. a ver. No, no, lo voy a ver, no lo estoy viendo. ¿Y dónde está el muchacho? Trae una troca blanca. ¿Ya se fue? Sí. Ay, me asusté bastante, eso. Okay, just uh, just hold on, okay. Um, about eight fifty fifty three around there. Quieres uh quieres follow un report? Tengo miedo que me vaya que los intacts. Hey, this is the one to do Can you send PD to my twenty? I'm right here at the Circle King and uh, McPherson and uh, Loop Twenty. It's in reference to uh, an assault uh, on a female. You, you know which one, right, the Valero, right here at the um, intersection of uh, Loop Twenty and, Mc, and uh, McPherson, like going towards the Border Patrol station. Okay, let me. Yeah, I'm waiting here with a female. All right, thanks. Tengo miedo, no puedo sentar ahí. Espérate. Oye, entonces, nomás tengo que saber algo. Entonces, tú te subiste a la troca de un muchacho. Yo subí, sí. Él ofreció comprarme cigarros y compró unas beers. Y dijo, ¿vas a dar la vuelta conmigo? Y yo le dije que sí, sir. Nomás que yo nunca me voy lejos. So I noticed de que 
de que él estaba manejando muy para acá y le dije... ¿Y dónde estaba el muchacho? ¿Este es ahí? ahí? ¿Ahí donde está la troca? ¿Es esta y el carro? Allá, un tal trailer. Ay, eso me quedó so, so, cuando yo estaba aquí, ¿estabas adentro de la troca? Sí. Me vine corriendo, me quería, me sacó la pistola y me quería subir y me empecé a gritar. Help me, help me. So, cuando te bajaste de la troca, gritaste? Sí, eso. Ok. ¿Y no te acuerdas...? Uh... Hay una Dodge Blanca, vive por aquí. ¿Sabes dónde vive? Sí, sí. Si me llevo ahorita, más o menos, sí puedo dar. Sir. ¿Y por qué, por qué te subiste con él? ¿No? ¿Por qué ibas a ir a...? ¿Por qué? Porque me dijo este, que si quería unos cigarros. Ajá. Y yo le dije que sí, y él nomás me dijo, ven a dar la vuelta conmigo un rato y te llevo... ¿Esa Dodge Ram que está aquí no es esa? A ver, sí. No. ¿Esa no es? Are you sure he's not maybe standing around? Maybe a lo mejor está la vuelta. Mire, y luego I started getting very sick, sir. Uh -huh. I started getting very sick. Y este dijo, le digo yo a él, maybe it's because we've been eating all day. Yeah. I'm going to stop real aquí. They saw this really good So burger. you know who he is? His name is David. You only know him as David or? Yeah. It's your name, sir. Just relax. No, sir. No, pues ya te miró because if, if you're coming this way, yes, then. Yes, he has a gun, sir. Well, no, don't worry about it. You're, in, you're, you're, you're yeah, safe right now. I'm Yeah, but you're safe right now. Está bien, don't worry. Um, ahorita, mira. We're relaxed. Just relax. Um, we were talking about the What assessment right now are you making uh, based on your training experience of what per what she's going through? So right there, I believe she's real scared of something that just happened to her. And it was my through my training experience that she got assaulted. Question. He's not qualified to testify to her mental state under any circumstance. The jury is watching this video. They're entitled to their own interpretation. And he's entitled to his opinion based on his training and experience on what he's observing. Yeah, well, on that, uh, objection overruled at this time. Uh -huh. And he got very nervous. He got very nervous. And um, he started acting weird, and my stomach started to hurt. Literally, I vomit. He le digo yo, are you okay? And he's like, um, yeah, I'm okay. And then he, all of a sudden, he's like, and he's like just ponte aquí nomás, aquí nomás, just nomás quédate así. Y luego, all of a sudden, me dice, dice, I feel weird. He said, I feel very stressed. Pero te asaltó, ¿ver? Cuando te quitó la camisa. So he was trying to grab you? He was trying to grab me and subir me to the truck, to subir me. With one thing, he said, wait, he fell there on the side. Wait, just sit there, just sit there. He fell there on the side and he said, because he knew that I didn't want to go far. Yeah. And he parked right here and he was like, wait, wait. And he said, what are you doing? I'm just fixing my bags. Ay, va, don't worry. So, ¿por qué no me, um, cuando me dices, por qué no me dijiste, se acaba de ir un muchacho o algo? No, porque vengo corriendo desde allá. So, él estaba en la calle. Él estaba en la troca. Pero, manejando. sí, no, yo sé, pero ¿dónde estaba la, la, la troca? ¿En la, la calle o aquí en el parque? En la calle. La... Ah, ok. En la calle, sir. Y yo le dije, el señor tiene una blusa. Y luego el señor dice, este, allá está la policía, ve. So I'm very scared. Don't worry, you're, you're, I'm you're. Afraid, sir. So, conoce tu familia, okay? No sabe dónde vivo. And how does he? How, so you knew this guy before? Yes, I've. Mire, el vato anda en la sangre. Uh huh. Y varias veces me ha levantado. Uh huh. Can you please explain what she, what she just said that he goes by the sangre. Well, what, what does that mean? Um. So when she says that, um, thinking that that's where they meet. 
They, what is what is do you know what samba is? Uh, it's a slang term for our street there in Laredo. It's uh, San Bernardo. Okay, San Bernardo. San Bernardo. San Bernardo. San Bernardo. We're, in, we're in Bear County, so please. Yes, sir. Tell the jury um, where that is. It's a it's a slang term that they use when they describe the San Bernardo Street Avenue, and they they usually reference that to San Ber. Thank you. And what and and based again on your how many years? Seventeen years. Of Seventeen years, sir. What goes on on San Bernardo? Uh, there's a lot of traffic there, sir. Uh, traffic from all kinds of crime. Yes, when you say I'm not, you, I'm not. You say there's traffic. That's police lingo, right? We're not talking automobile traffic. Yes, sir. Sorry. Please explain to the jury in plain terms what you mean when you say there's a lot of traffic in San Bernardo. Yes, sir. Um, so what I mean by by traffic is that um, there's a lot of. Um, Drugs, a lot of crime, a lot of robberies, a lot of uh, um, hijacking, a lot of uh, prostitution, uh, a lot of crime, basically. Thank you. Yes. Sir. Okay. 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 Quieres unos cigarros y una piel, acompáñame a dar la vuelta. Pero él empezó a manejar para acá y para acá y yo no me dio miedo. Yo le dije que yo no vengo hasta acá. So, okay. so este, he knew that I wanted to get off. Y él me dice, este, déjame llevarte aquí para comprar tu lunch y te llevo para atrás y te dejo. Uh -huh. And, um, este, me dice, déjame comprar tu lunch y luego te llevo para atrás. He said she's closer. Okay, well, I'm not Dodge Blanca. But don't worry, ahorita. Um, we ahorita. started talking about the muchachos que acaban de fallecer. Las que las rompieron allá. Okay. I don't have cigarettes, so I don't smoke. The cigarettes are bad for you. No, cigarettes are bad for you right now. Me quiero tranquilizar, sir. I mean, I just hold on, ahorita. Y luego le dije yo, este, préstame tu teléfono. Es que de repente me dio un feeling, sir, de que, de algo de él. Y le digo yo, he noticed me that I got scared. Y le digo yo, préstame tu teléfono para hablarle a mi mamá, para decirle que estoy bien. Y luego me dice, wait, I'll let you use the phone right now. And uh, nunca me quiso prestar el teléfono. Ya nos subimos a la troca y este, le digo, préstame el teléfono. Y ya me lo quiso prestar, sir. Oh, don't worry, mira. He started ahorita. cruising, que quería que viniera con él a dar la vuelta, a comprar unos cigarros y una cerveza. Y pasó por su casa, vive por aquí. No sé muy bien, yo no más sé qué es. C-H-A-O-S, algo así, sand, algo por ahí, sir. Okay. At this point in time, she is trying to describe to you the location of his home? Yes, sir. And, and as part of your work, did you ever have the opportunity that evening to actually go investigate his home? Yes, sir. Okay. And you were present, one of the officers present when she showed you the home? Yes, sir. Do you remember what street that was on? Yes, sir. What was that street? It was uh, Sand Hill. Sand Hill? I believe Ver it was San Sand Hill. What she's describing is Sand Hill and uh, Chisos uh, Street. Okay. Yes. And did she point at the house? Yes, sir. Does she... Does the word Burr Oak also sound familiar? Uh, which one? Burr Oak. Burr. Burr. I think she also mentions it, but I'm not really sure about that, sir. Uh, but physically, did she identify the house? Yeah, she physically identified uh, the house um, later on. Later on, okay. Yes, sir. So, mira, we're going to la hablar que Piri me ayudara aquí, okay? Because Piri tiene más resources aquí para poder ir a buscar al muchacho and then pues to help you out, okay? So, ahorita nomás se llega Piri. Well, I mean, sí, if you already have a description del muchacho de la sí, troca, bueno, más o menos donde va, then it shouldn't be. Okay. Trabaja, no sé But the, I'm una long page shirt, botas. You it's, just got a weird feeling this time. Yes, sir. I even started to vomit. I even started to vomit, sir. Pero bueno, pues, let me. 
Let me just check something out. I don't have any money. Sir, imagine when I got the pistol, he opened the door, he wanted me to get in and that I would be quiet. Thank you, thank you. Pedrito. Thank you, thank you. 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 Thank that 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 subject had come up between them, correct? Yes. Were you aware of those of that? Of, you said something there. De las muchachas que dompearon, or que. Yes, not, sir. Okay. What were you? What did you know that uh, some women had been found murdered? Yes, sir. Yeah, we had uh, been aware that there were, I believe, two murders uh, before before um, coming across her. And um, they were, uh, I believe, found on the outskirts of Laredo. Was anybody from your department involved in the investigation of those cases? Yes, sir. And who uh, was that? I believe we had, um, on the first one, um, I'm not sure if it was the first or second, uh, it was a trooper, Arizola. I think he came across one of them. Any other Texas Rangers? And uh, yes, sir. Uh, it was also uh, Texas Ranger E.J. Salinas, as well, which I later contacted. Okay. How did you, how do you come to make contact with Ranger Texas Ranger Salinas during this encounter? So, I came about contacting Ranger Salinas because of what she was stating to me about those um, uh, victims that were murdered, and. But, um, and that the person that she escaped from knew one of those girls. And that's when I decided that this could help break a case, and I contacted Ranger Salinas for further investigation for from his expertise. And what what instructions did the Ranger give you? Longer than 50 years ago. Okay. Sustained at this time. What, what, if anything, did you do with her after that phone call? I... I... Um, I provided a transport to to the Webb County Sheriff's Office um, for further questioning and made contact with Ranger Salinas at that time. And he would have been waiting for her there? Yes, sir, he was. Okay. Well, what's the status on PD? <laughs> All right, thanks. Let me know. All right. Oh, no, don't worry. Ya deben de llegar ahorita, so... Ya con eso, pues el description que me diste, si el description... Well, then you gotta do something before he does, well, you know? Who's reporting? Because I am. Okay, and that's good. That's why ahorita, about any PD, we're gonna do a police report, and, and you have the description that muchacho y todo. Just relax, so. Just relax, take deep breaths, so. Take deep breaths. Just take, take deep breaths, so. Okay? Just take deep breaths. Uh huh. Take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath. He offered money. Okay. Okay. Pero when we went in his house, he went to su casa. Yeah. I started. My body, I started feeling very sick. I started shaking. Me dio yeah. miedo. Okay. Miedo me dio. So yo invento. Le digo, vamos para la troca porque se me quedó algo ahí. Uh -huh. Y ya que nos salimos, le digo yo, ya no voy a entrar. Ya no puedo entrar. Me empecé a sentir bien mal allá adentro. So está bueno, agarró las llaves, la wallet. Nos subimos. Y este fue cuando empezó a manejar para acá. Gracias a Dios que no me quedo ni nunca más. Me hago mejor ha pasado. Yo vi en su mirada, se como que but that's why you're gonna make a police report, ¿me entiendes? You're safe with me, ¿me entiendes? Aquí no te apures. We're just trying to see, maybe he's circling around or algo, como dices tú. And I'm watching, I'm watching.
en una troca blanca, este, las ventanas no están tan oscuras. Yeah. Pues, I'm keeping an eye, no te preocupes. Let's just wait for PD real quick, okay? Así para que le... Just relax. Ya te estás mejor. A little bit. Just to keep taking deep breaths. Él me quería llevar para allá. Más que yo no. Oh. Okay. You don't, you don't need an ambulance? No. Sir. The ambulance, no? You're okay. No más said el susto que te sacó la pistola and, and that you might be fearing for your life. Okay. Okay, hold on. Hello? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, no worries, no worries. Don't do some baby's part. I can stand by here. Okay, ah, uh, hold on. ¿Cómo te llamas? Erica. Erica, ¿qué? Salma Peña. Salma Peña? Salma. Uh, let me give you a 20 centimeter, hold on. Erica Peña. Erica Peña, ¿y tu date of birth? 11-23-91. Erica Peña, 11-23-91. Erica Peña. No, no, no. She doesn't need any medical help. She just wants to fall in an assault report. Okay. Down the Let's see what PD is going to want. Okay. Is that a PD? Down. 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 We'll, we'll check right now. I'll let you know how I think. So with the NPD, they just, I gotta advise them when they get here. Yeah, just relax, so relax. Sí, you gotta take a deep breath. Ahorita, sí, just wait. I can't go, Tengo, tiene, tiene que ir PD primero, then I'll, I'll get you something. Sí. But, but it tiene que venir PD primero, okay? No well, let's just take that first, okay? Let's just take that first step, okay? Yes. You're, you're a cigarette smoker, okay? Yes. Sir. A lot? I smoke. No, how much? How, how much do you smoke? I smoke a lot. During the day, cuánto? Okay, we well just hold on. All right, don't worry. But you're okay, verdad? Yes. Okay. No más el susto. So basically, he's like a friend of yours. He's not a real friend, sir. I've seen him four or five times. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Cuatro o cinco veces lo he visto y él me daba dinero. Verdad, pero yo no lo había visto. Okay. Yo no lo había visto, sino que hoy en la tarde lo vi. Y este. He knew Melissa, right? The girl they killed Melissa Ramirez, and we started talking about her. What happened? And he got very weird all of a sudden, very mm -hmm. nervous. He did? Okay. I don't know, sir. I got a vibe. A bad vibe? A vibe. Horrible vibe, sir. And, um... So that's when the Pam Salon Aulad, that's when he got really, like, did he get angry? He got, like, nervous and scared. Okay. And he said, yeah, he said, but let's talk about you. He said, why did you get, he said, why did, why did you um, all of a sudden got scared? Why are you scared of me? I started getting scared, so. Y él vio que yo empecé casi hasta temprano. ¿Te sabes su nombre completo o nomás el nombre que? El David. El David. Tiene una casa por aquí. That's where he was going. Yeah. Does he live by himself? Yes, it's, it's a big house, sir. 
Um, I know he just got separated, and la casa estaba sola. Um, y pues está solo. Okay. He's alone. He's alone. Pero he wanted to go in his room. Y yo no. Al Dios me dijo que no sé. Su vibra y como él se empezó a poner su mirada, sus comportamientos. Pero so you, you say you wanted to go in his room? He wanted me to, he wanted to take me. Oh, I see what you mean. Él me quería llevar. Yeah, 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 I understand. Y yo no quise. Fue cuando yo le dije, lo dejé algo en la troca. Vamos. Okay. Y este, se cargó la cartera y me dijo, vámonos, está bueno. And, um, me quería llevar más para allá. Se, se iba a parquear aquí a, a Ron Burger y me dice, hold on. Y saca la pistola. What color was it going? Black? Gray? Black? Soy black. Okay. ¿Y te la apuntó o, o sí. no? Sí. ¿Sí te la apuntó? Sí, me la apuntó así, sí. Okay. Aquí. Me la apuntó así. He's tall, cuero. Este, trae unas botas como de Ojos trabajo. de color. Las botas son café. Traía unos pantalones así como este color, un poquito claritos. Y traía una camisa este beige okay. de manga larga. All right. Y andaba solo, no andaba con alguien más. No, él andaba solo. Él andaba solo, sí. Y luego este. Um, empezó a decir que que he was scared, que porque um, he was one of the guys that saw Melissa last. Really? And I don't know what. Y le sucedió sin blusa. Mírenme su. ¿Y el muchacho este sabe dónde trabaja? No. ¿No? Because he's wearing boots and, and like, so like a an oil field worker. Como, um, I think he said he was a supervisor somewhere. Like in the oil field or Okay. Okay, no, no, don't worry. Uh, ahorita, ahorita viene alguien. Don't worry, okay? I believe you. I believe you. I do. I do believe you. That's why I'm offering you, like, to help you. And at the same time, pues, si no necesitas ayuda, um, let's see what PD might help us out and maybe ir a buscarlo, you know, go look for him right now. Or, or maybe if you already know him, they can give you pictures of him, you know? So don't worry. I mean, I assure you que, que you're in good hands. Ahorita, no te asustes. Ahorita, if he's circling around or whatever, you're, you're here with me, OK? That's, that's what I'm looking for. I see no way to pass another Dodge, another Dodge uh, Ram or something like that. Sí, sí, algo Ram, una blanca. You know it was a Dodge. Okay. You feel a little bit more relaxed, yeah? I know, just just hold on though. No más perate. Uh, just hold on. Ten cuidado, es que tengo... No, 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 es... ¿Tienes una amiga? ¿Y con la amiga la hablas? Like if he was on something? No. No, no sé, sir. No más este. Dijo, le digo, are you okay? And I was shaking. I was hard now. And he was like, he was like, no, it's a little weird. And this was, I said, 
No, don't worry. I'll, I'm keeping an eye. Don't worry. You're safe here. This is not Ford. You say Dodge, right? Did you get a Dodge? Ah, bueno, ahorita que venga Piri, Piri might go take sí, you there, ¿me entiendes? Estoy bien, bien pendeja para ti. Pero sabes cómo llegar. Pero más o menos, tengo que concentrarme eso. Ok. Toque mi corazón, Don't sí. worry. Touch my heart, what if No, I believe you, I, I totally believe you. I, I know you're just going through a shock right now. Donde, donde acabas de salir de un, de un escape, you know what I mean? You basically escape from a situation where it would, could be dangerous. Pero eso no es, eso es una SUV. No, no tiene las, algo así, algo así, okay. muy, como nueva, nuevecita, pero no tiene las ventanas tan oscuras. ¿Son four door? Yeah. Don't worry. Todavía tienes miedo. Bastante miedo. Bueno, no, I'm keeping an eye de, de eso. Ok. Pues ahora sabes que no puedes llegar a su vehículo ni más. ¿Me entiendes? You learned, I mean, you, you, I mean, unfortunately tuvo que pasar esto, you know. No es de confiar en mucha gente, especially if you don't know him that well. Yeah. I mean, you say que he four times, maybe? Cuatro, cinco veces. Y siempre me buscaba, sir, pero yo lo tiraba a León. Yeah. Yo lo tiraba a León. Y este, yo sabía que, que he would pick up Melissa también. Really? Melissa Ramírez. La primera. La, sí. Yo, este, yo sabía que él la levantaba porque él me platicaba de ella y cuando yo la miraba que ella también de él, ¿verdad? ¿No has visto al de la troca blanca? Porque me alivia la feria y yo no, no más que yo lo tiraba a León porque era como bien necio. Ok. Y no más que no lo había visto en dos semanas y me vio y me dijo, ¿quieres unos cigarros y una cerveza? Y yo le dije que sí y me subí. Yeah. Este, bueno, vamos a dar la vuelta un ratito. Bueno, está bueno, le digo, pero no muy lejos, le digo, porque yo no me voy muy lejos. Este, no más que si no. Ay, no, ¿Y Melissa no era tu amiga? No. ¿No la conocías? Yo la miraba, yo la miraba. Y este, pues nomás la conocí en el condado y así en la calle, pero hasta ahí. ¿Y la segunda muchacha esa no la conocías? De vista nomás también. también. Pues, maybe, I mean, así como estás cooperando conmigo, coopera con el oficial este que venga. And I'm pretty sure they can help you out en esa manera para poder traer un, a, un assault report, at least, you know, con, con él. And maybe you can break a case de lo que está pasando ahorita. Sí. You know what I mean? Yeah. You never know. You never know. Sí. I mean, ellos ya no pueden hablar por ellos, you know sí. what I mean? Sí. You know? Ay, gracias a Dios que me bajé la troca. Well, if you think about it, estas murders han pasado en las noches. Ay, voy ahorita nomás, deja que venga la policía, eh? deja que venga, es que no te puedo dejar sola, I mean, especially si es que anda, o he might be around here o algo, yeah. a lo mejor va a pensar que nada, ahorita dice algo, el policía lo ignora y te vas caminando otra vez, you know, like, I don't want him, 
to think that way, you know. Explanation as to why PD hasn't arrived up to this point. Laredo PD, I'm referring to. Um, I had called to check the status, and they told me that. I believe they they told me they had um, uh, several calls, but one was going to be uh, en route. And then from this point on, we just started waiting to see. I, uh, I told communi our communications to, okay, as long as one is en route, um, I guess we'll be fine. But up to this point, um, I didn't call them again afterwards, for because of what what was coming, what was transpiring. For the information you were gathering. Yes, sir. I don't have any though. I really don't. That's what they hit the center of the pack and I didn't mirar. Yeah, Esta es la que se metió primero. Ese, a ver, no. No, ese. no, ese era el muchacho que caminó ahorita para allá en camisa gris. Talking right, y le digo yo, I heard that um, they're picking, they're picking people up to investigate, right? Mm -hmm. um, the girls, and he's like, well, what are the girls saying? Um, what have you heard? And I'm like, I don't know. I literally empecé a temblar, que la tuve que despistar de como empecé a temblar. Wow. <clears throat> en serio, sir. I believe you, no, I'm better than you. La tuve que despistar, sir, cuando empecé yo a decir like there was nothing wrong para que no mirara. Que él me vio, ir eso. Que él me vio cuando yo... Si no será ese que vaya arriba, se toca blanca. I don't know. But no, don't worry. I mean, I thought that's, that's, you're safe. So you got nervous when le comenzaste a mencionar a las muchachas. You think he's capable of doing something like that? I mean, carrying a gun? Me sacó la pistola. Estoy diciendo que me la sacó, sir. De repente se partió aquí. Don't worry, I mean, I'm, I'm keeping an eye. De repente se partió allá. Atrás del trailer. ¿Esa troca no? No, esta no. Esta no, ¿verdad? Que va aquí. De repente 
se parqueó atrás del tráiler, ¿verdad? Yeah. Este, because supposedly he was gonna go in through here, pero dice, dice, do you want drive through o quieres walk in? Y le digo yo, drive through. Dice, wait, well hold on because I have to uh, get in by the sidewalk. So él se parquea, sir, atrás del tráiler. Yeah. Dice, wait, wait a minute. Y la saca y abre la puerta y me agarra él. Yeah. Y yo empiezo a gritar y quiero este, alcanzar a sí, Palhón para que oiga la gente que estoy pitando. Pero me sacó de la shirt. He grabbed the hold of your shirt, or yeah. te quiso agarrar completamente. Te quiso agarrar completamente. Yeah, and de tus zapatos de la camisa. De la shirt. I know, just relax. Y le digo al muchacho ese cuando empecé a cuando empecé a a caminar over here, estaba yo sin shirt. Y le digo, una camisa era o algo para taparme. Y dice, y dice allá está el policía. Uno de los de aquí te dijo. El que está allá. Sí, sí, ya sé. Allá un señor. Okay. I know, it's just, I can't go by myself. Just hold on, espérate, just relax. Ahorita te lo agarramos, just, just relax. Yeah, just take deep breaths, slowly, in and out, just slowly. Por mientras, I know, you're, pues it's a shock. I mean, you just escaped from a from a possible kidnap, you know? I mean, te fuera hecho kidnap, and that would have been the end of you. The gun you say it was, it was black or white? It was black. Black? Gordita. A ver, just hold on, okay? Give me a second, please, okay? Please. Hey, hello? Hey, um, es que tengo una girl que she escaped from a, from a girl, from a guy that uh, pointed a gun at her here at McPherson in Loop 20, and she's one of those, one of those girls, you know what I mean? And uh, the guy pointed a gun, and he se le, se le escapó a la persona, and she's without a shirt basically right now. And I called PD to come over here and assist, but they haven't shown up though. So, but she knows that guy's name, like the first name and where he lives. So, see, I'm, well, just the first name, David. And um, yeah. Más o menos vive por aquí. Y vive por una casa que se llama ¿Cómo se llama la calle? No, 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 no. No más dime qué calle es. Por San Isidro. Por San Isidro, it's a big house. Por San Hill or something like that, right? Es una calle, más o menos San. San Hill, I think that's what it is. I'm right here in McPherson and uh, Loop 20, right here at the, uh, the, uh, the Circle K in Valero. Yendo pa, pa Border Patrol. Yeah. Yeah. She's gone. She's gone to the house before. She's without a shirt. Took off my shirt. She's without a shirt right now because she escaped from him. The one in the Border Patrol headquarters on McPherson, that corner one. By oh, yeah, International and Loop Twenty. No, 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 I'm sorry, McPherson and Loop 20, McPherson and Loop 20. Yeah, but, well, and it's not the X one, it's the uh, Circle K. Loop 20 and McPherson, yeah, the one that's like when you go towards Border Patrol. Yeah, she, she's in shock, man, like... And um, she was trying to mention something about the other two girls, and that's when the guy got nervous. And I guess she know she knows. Well, she doesn't know, but she knows who they are. Some muchachas. Uh, 
Like, yeah, you want me to take over there? I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Um, we're at the, the same station right there, the Web County. Oh, do, you, do, you, do you have an extra shirt though? Or can you get an extra shirt? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna, we're gonna go get a shirt and then that way they can talk to you. All right. Mira, um, this is what's gonna happen. Uno de los oficiales de nosotros va a hablar contigo, ¿ok? Just the same situation que me dijiste, so all this, ¿ok? Um, I told them to get you a shirt yeah. para que, pa que puedas hablar comfortable con ellos, ¿ok? And um, so we're going to go to the station and we're going to talk to you regarding your situation right now, most importantly. Yeah. Y luego también regarding maybe the guy's name, más o menos donde vive todo eso, ¿ok? So basically, um, we're going to help you out, ¿me entiendes? So, Mira, no te voy a decir que te vengas acá atrás. Si quieres, te puedes ir enfrente. Um, let me tell him. You made a phone call there towards the end. Who, who did you call? That was uh, Ranger Salinas. Okay. And uh, what what did you do after you spoke to Ranger Salinas? So after I spoke with uh, Ranger Salinas, I. I positioned her in the front of the patrol car in the passenger seat, and and um, we took her. I took her to the Webb County uh, station. Okay. When she gets to the station, uh, Ranger Salinas is waiting for you. Yes, sir. Okay. Do they interview Erica? Yes, sir. How long did, do they interview her? Um, I I don't recall, sir. Okay. Was it more than an hour? Um, uh, they interviewed her right away. Okay. That I remember. So after they interview her right away, are you waiting there on standby, or what are you doing? Yeah, I'm standing by there, um, waiting with the um, Ranger Salinas, okay. and trying to acquire information as far as the assailant where he lives, and um, gather, I guess, the facts to to the address and who this person might be. Or did you make any progress on that? Yes, sir. Tell us what you what you were able to find. Or so, what did you do? so I was, I was familiar with the streets that she had uh, mentioned earlier, and um, with the assistance of Ranger Salinas and Webb County Sheriff's Office and their team, um, we were able to drive to uh, the location where the where Mr. David lives. And when we were driving by that location, uh, she pointed out physically. She pointed out um, that that's where he lives. And she also mentioned the. Uh, uh, social men. Hold it. Wait for the next. I'm question. gonna ask you. You went to that area that she described. Yes, sir. Uh, she was in the car. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Um. And how was she able to identify the house? Were you under an objective hearsay? Well, rephrase maybe speculation. Um, was she able to identify the house? Yes, sir. How? Well, again, you are to your say. What's wrong? Uh, she, well, she, she, something she told her. Uh, I'll take them on board down if I have to. Do you want to take them on board down? Yeah. Okay. okay. From your personal knowledge that you saw, you didn't know where they, Juan David Ortiz lived, right? No, sir. Okay. So if you found out where he lived, you heard it from the mouth of Erica Pena, correct? And the evidence I gathered. Okay, but if, I understand the end, it could be a bunch of ants. You heard it from the mouth of Erica Pena, did you not? Yes. Okay, it's here, say, Your Honor. Right. Was she able to point out the house of David Ortiz? Well, Your Honor, again, it's an assertion uh, for the truth of the matter asserted. It's still hearsay, even if it's not spoken. No, it's not, Your Honor. I'm asking if she was able to point out the house. I'm going to overrule the objection. Was well, she able to point out yes, the sir. house, yes or no? Yes, sir, yeah. She okay. was able to point out the house. What, if anything, did you do after she Can, pointed out the house? Um, so we verified that to double-check the accuracy of her location that, that we were there, um, she had vomited, and earlier that day she had told me that she had vomited. Oh, Your Honor, I'm gonna so, hear say, oh, no. this is a law enforcement officer, he knows what hearsay is, I'm objecting to hearsay, you can instruct them not to discuss hearsay. Yeah. Your Honor, that was made during the excited utterance, uh, information that he gathered, and he was... So, 
like I was saying, um, she had mentioned to me that she had vomited, and to collaborate her story, confirm her story that was true, um, we were looking for that vomit at that house because she had vomited outside of her house, did of his you, house. Yeah. And did you in fact see vomit outside the house? Yes, question? sir. Yes. Yes, it was. Um, I'm not sure if it was in the sidewalk or like like close to the sidewalk or the 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 walkway. But, and you yourself saw the vomit? Yes, sir. Okay. After you confirm and corroborate what she had said uh, to you, what, if anything, did you all do? So after that, um, we gathered the information of who's the owner, the registered owner of that house, who it belonged to. Um, I was able to retrieve the registered owner's uh, name and I was able to through my training experience I was able to gather um, the name and date of birth of that registered owner and uh, commun contacted our communications in Laredo and after they found out the name and date of birth I requested a picture to see who that person was and they sent me a picture after finding out the person's uh, identity, and after gathering that picture, uh, I showed it to Mrs. Uh, Erica Peña that was next to me when we were looking for that house. Did she recognize the person and in that photo? Yes, I, I showed her the picture of her, of Mr. De Ortiz's uh, driver license picture, and Peña right away said, yes, that's him. Do you see Juan David Ortiz in the courtroom here today? Yes, sir. And can you identify him for the record? Uh, he's over there sitting on that table. Okay. What else did you do after that, if anything? Uh, so after that, um, uh, we were we were between Webb County and the Sheriff's Office, I mean, uh, Webb County and Ranger Salinas. Um, I provided that information to Ranger Salinas and uh, Webb County. We quickly, um, we um, we were our our supervisors in DPS were able were were able to spread out our our troopers to different areas of of uh, high crime areas where Mr. Ortiz could have possibly been. And I also believe that they had sent some uh, Webb County deputies uh, to that house to to um, secure the house to see if he was in that house. So we had um, officers in, in his house and troopers assigned to Webb County in different areas of high crime rates looking for Mr. Ortiz's um, uh, as well, I was able to also look for um, the registered owners of the vehicles of, that were in that house, and we were able to come up with a, a vehicle description of Mr. Ortiz's uh, uh, vehicle that he would drive. So we put out a bolo, a be on the lookout. What was the description of that vehicle? It was, um, I don't remember the license plate. That's fine, but the uh, make and model? It was a, um, at that time, it was a four-door Dodge, um, tinted window, um, a newer, newer model uh, vehicle. Pickup truck or? Vehicle? Pickup truck, sorry. Okay. Pickup truck. A Dodge Ram. Dodge Ram, yes, sir. Okay. And as part of your bolo, you, you all would have put out the license plate as well? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, we, we did. Was the vehicle, was uh, Ortiz's vehicle uh, eventually located? Yes. Yes, it was located. Um, I'm going to object to hearsay on this. He has personal knowledge. Well, did he you answered that question. Ask your next question. Okay. Uh, did, did you have the occasion to, um, later on that evening, participate in the apprehension of Ortiz? Yes, sir. How? So we drove back to the station um, with Mrs. Erica Peña and after putting out the lookout so we can provide her more assistance of what she had just gone through. And 
we had put out that bo- bolo, and one of our troopers uh, that was was assigned to the San Bernardo area, the San Bernardo Avenue, was able to locate a possible truck matching that description that was out on the lookout. And um, trooper, along with another trooper, made contact with that subject or that vehicle. And they, the after making contact, the person fled, which was Mr. Ortiz. Oh, is there something there to you on it, just what he did? Okay, so you can ask your next question. So did you respond to the area where the vehicle was located? Yes, sir. I responded to the area. and what, When you got to the area, what area did you respond to? The It was on uh, San Bernardo and the uh, Avia Hotel. I, I believe that's the name of the hotel. The Ava Hotel. Ava Hotel, yes, sir. Okay. Is that near San Bernardo and Jefferson? Yes, sir. Less? Yes, sir. What was happening there when you got there? So when I got there, I noticed uh, uh, Trooper Bradshaw and Trooper... Uh, Obregón um, had just given chase to that person and had escaped on foot and we made contact all three of us and along with the Web County Sheriff's Office and decided to set up a perimeter and start looking for the subject within two buildings that were there which was the Hotel Eva and there was an abandoned white building there as well and we cleared uh, after Webb County SWAT arrived, and along with our, our troopers, we were able to enter the white building first to clear to make sure he wasn't there. And then after that, we ended up clearing the second building in there, which was the hotel. And when we cleared that hotel, the, on the fourth floor was Mr. Ortiz. He was found there. Please describe for the ladies and gentlemen the, the configuration of the hotel or the parking lot area. How yes, many sir. floors was it? So it was four floors. And uh, next to that white building, it has a little ramp. It has a ramp where vehicles come off, and it goes on to the first floor, and it circles around second floor, third floor, and then the fourth. And Mr. Ortiz was was hidden in the fourth floor in the bed of a pickup truck. Did you have... Was your body cam activated during this uh, yes, sir. search and, and, and when you located o- o- yes, sir. Ortiz? Yes, That body cam video was also preserved? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, is there anything else you did uh, as part of this case? Um, no, sir. I, I believe that's about it, sir. He was... Uh, who took, who took Mr. Ortiz uh, from the from the parking lot once he was arrested? Um, I don't recall, sir. Okay. What other agencies were participating in the search for Ortiz? It was our Texas Rangers. It was Webb County Sheriff's Office and uh, DPS. And was it uh, the R- Webb County Sheriff's Office a SWAT team that was there? Yes, sir. It was their SWAT team. And he was taken without incident, correct? Yes, he he gave up and, and taken without incident. Okay. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Can we approach, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Trooper uh, Hernandez, my name is Joel Perez, and together with Raymond Fuchs, we represent Mr. Ortiz here to my right. Um, when you said a little while ago that that you were able to, I just want to make sure who did it. So you're saying that it was you who, through your computer skills, training, etc., uh, pulled up 
the registered, not the registered owner, but uh, the, the county owner, the, the, the real estate owner for that 204 Burr Oak in Laredo, Webb County? Was it you? We, I was the one that uh, uh, instructed our communications to look for the, the, I was the one that, that instructed the com our communications to look for the uh, driver license or an identification for the registered owner. Okay. So it wasn't Salinas, Ranger Salinas, or I believe Captain they, Calderon, or something like that? I believe that they were doing it at the same time as, as me. But since I was um, in direct communications with our, our operators, I, I was able to get that um, ahead of time as well. Okay, and were you getting direction to perform these duties from some higher, I mean, I, forgive me, I don't know the uniform of DPS. What is your rank? I'm a trooper, sir. Okay. And so I assume, like most uh, agencies, there's uh, your trooper, your lieutenant, sergeant, whatever, captain. Yes, sir. Okay. Correct. And uh, um, now let's go to the, uh, the photo ID. You obtained this photo ID of whoever responded, say, hey, this is the registered owner of this 204 borough. You said you requested an ID, right? Photo? Yes, yes, sir, correct. Okay. And did someone instruct you to display that photo to, uh, I'm going blank now, Erica Pena? Erica Pena. Uh, did someone instruct you to do that? No, sir. Okay. Um, are you familiar with lineups? Um, not really, sir. I don't have experience in lineups. Okay. And in, in displaying this photo to Ms. Pena, uh, you did it based on your own intuition, your own whatever. It was, no one instructed you to do it? No, sir. No one instructed me to do it. Did you I, ask permission to do it? We don't need permission, sir, for that. Okay. Do, do you have an, an investigatory... Uh, training on, on maybe why you shouldn't display a single photograph of a person of interest to a witness? Um, I don't have, um, as far as, I have uh, identity, threat, identity theft uh, fraud training, and usually at that time when I got that picture, we wanted to assure that this person will not kill anymore, and since she escaped from him. I wanted to assure That's that. That's not what I asked him. you. I'm just asking if you had training. As far as what, sir? On lineups and stuff like that. On lineups, no, sir. I, I okay. stated no. Okay. Now, you also said that you... Uh, I'm trying to figure out who did all this because you're testifying uh, that, that DPS troopers went to high crime area. You didn't direct them to do that. Someone higher up than you did that. Yes, sir. Like... Okay. Like I mentioned, it was I contacted our supervisors so they can uh, spread out our two person. And who would have been that supervisor? Um, I believe at that time it was our captain. Uh, um, uh, or it's okay. I'm just trying to figure. Um, I can't out remember. It was I Ranger can't Salinas. Recall. That's all I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Was it Ranger Salinas? I think Ranger Salinas as well. Uh, contacted our, our 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 highway patrols uh, supervisors, and they cooperated together. Okay, and you also said something else. You said you placed DPS officers in his house at two hundred four Burr Oak. I said Webb County. Okay, so w uh, who directed Webb County to place officers in his house? Oh, that you one that? I I don't know, sir. Okay, I'm, I don't don't know about that. Now, were you present when these officers went into the house? When the first officers went to Webb County, the Webb County officers to their house? No, sir. Okay, so that's just knowledge that you have, that they, they were dispatched. That's what they had told me. Okay. And when you say into the house, you mean inside the house to, you know, to preserve evidence and stuff No, like sir. That. Okay to stand by? Stand by, I believe. Okay. Uh, but regardless, you were not present for that? For that one, no, sir. Okay. Um, now, we know that you testified just now that at some point 
you relocate it uh, back to the garage over there on San Bernardo next to the, by the Ava Hotel and the like, correct? Correct, sir. Okay. And you testified that you personally assisted in seeking out uh, Mr. Ortiz. Correct, sir. Okay. Now, I've read most of the reports, if not all of them, and I know that supposedly uh, there was a stack of SWAT Webb County officers that were, de and you know what a stack is, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's where one officer is stacked behind the other and it's a protection Correct. technique. Correct? Correct. Okay. And so there was a stack of Webb County SWAT officers that directed themselves once they knew the location by this uh, pickup in the garage. You're aware of that? Um, yes, sir. They, we followed behind them. Okay. Now, like, like I know that the stack, according to what I read, had four SWAT officers. Do you know how far back from the stack you were? I can't recall, sir. I mean, were you like, were you number 16 back or were you number 6, 7, 8? I'm I, trying to figure out how close you were to the stack. I can recall, sir. Okay. Well, were you within sight of, of, of Mr. Ortiz being pulled out and handcuffed yes, sir. and stuff? Yes, sir, I was. Okay. Then, just generally speaking, about how many feet do you think you were away from that? Just, just roughly. I'm not going to hold you to it. About maybe five feet. Oh, five feet. So, Probably less. So what, I'm about 25, maybe 20 feet away from you? Yeah. So you Five feet. An estimate, yeah. Okay, so so when he's been taken down, I'm five foot nine. So, I mean, you know, I'm just using my height. Would you be this close? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and you do have your body cam on. Yes, sir. Okay. Can I add something to that? Oh, go ahead. So I was real close to him as well when they brought him down. I did not handcuff him, but. I remember saying that um, when, just to affirm that I was close there, close to him, um, I was getting to the guys to put to their rifles or their handguns on safety. And okay, so that there wouldn't be an accidental, an yes, accidental distance. That's how come I know I was real close. Sure. Did you happen to notice who patted him down? Uh, no, sir. Who were the officers in front of you on the stack? I can, can recall, sir. Okay. Did you hear uh, anyone give Mr. Ortiz's uh, Miranda warnings? I can recall about at that time, sir. Okay. But definitely you did not see anyone pat him down at the time. I know that there were patting him down. I just don't recall who or who was it, sir. Okay, no, I'm not going to hold you to it. You know, there's yes, so many agencies and your DPS, their SO. Uh, but... If you did, if you did see someone patting them down, did you see them retrieve any items from his person? Um, I don't recall, sir. Okay. But your body cam will show all that. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. I have no further questions of you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. A couple of more questions. Uh, was Erica's assailant, was he some stranger to her? Uh, no, sir. Was he some guy wearing a ski mask? No, sir. Was he some guy that she'd never seen before in her life? No, sir. So somebody she knew, right? Yes, sir. She... Somebody that she can identify? Yes, sir. Of so there course. was no need for a lineup? N no, sir. No, no further questions. Anything else? Uh, no, Your Honor. All right, sir. Your excuse, you may step down. Thank you. Okay. And, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we're going to recess for the day. I'm going to ask for you to be here at 8.15 tomorrow morning.
we'll be starting uh, soon thereafter, and uh, we're likely to work until 5.30 tomorrow, just so you can plan. Uh, we'll have a lunch break of about an hour, hour, 15 minutes perhaps again. And uh, I'll just remind you not to discuss the facts of the case with anyone, uh, including each other, not to watch any news accounts or read any newspaper articles regarding this case. You're exclusive this time. Thank you. All right, Senator.